Hey! 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 Hello! Oh. oh, man, that was pretty good, guys. Yeah. Wow. That was pretty good. Even nice. though we're down one, yeah, Moon's out. Yeah. Moon's in the Dominican. And uh, I know that, the listen, Dominican. I, know, I know there was some concern because on the other side of the island, uh -huh. Haiti... Yeah, it's going great over they're there, going, right? They're going through some stuff. Yeah, it's the worst time in their country's history. They have, like, cannibal gangs. I know. Did you see the video? No, I don't. Well, I don't watch the video, okay. but I see the headline, and I'm like, that's bad enough. I don't need to see it. There's a guy. I think he's known as The Butcher. Yes. Oh, no. I saw, saw a headline last night about him. And he's, like, the most powerful guy right now in Haiti. He's, like, one of these gang leaders. Uh-huh. Like a warlord? Yeah. Yep. And uh, for everybody they kill, they're like roasting them in the streets and like eating them. My God. And I saw a video of the butcher last night eating somebody's leg. Oh, my god. Good morning, gosh. everybody. Hey. Hello. I'm it's glad you're watching show. it so we don't have to. It's Monday. To. I think we solved the why you didn't sleep last night yeah. mystery. Well, yeah. yeah. And did you see how gross it was? There was a hair on the leg. Yuck. I, if I started watching, can you imagine? Like, I'm already a psycho. No, I cannot imagine. If I start watching the cannibalism warfare of Haiti, yeah. I'm out. Things <laughs> are not going deal. well. Um... How do they solve that? Things are not going well there. I have I've no idea. Like, is it the end of days? Let's just ask the hard stuff on a Monday. Is it the end of days? Let's ponder. I'm not sure, but the days are sure getting longer, aren't they? Well, now they're shorter. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> are. No, they're longer. Yeah. More sunshine. It was nice. The uh, Screw that, too. Sunset was after 7 o'clock yesterday. No, thanks. Yesterday was one of those Chamber of Commerce days. You know what I mean? Like, that's the... Like, you take a picture... Of the sky, and that's what you use to sell your town. That's yep. what you put Cut on the postcard. Ribbon. Yeah, you put that, you put that sky on the postcard. Mm. Welcome to Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny skies ahead. It was awesome. We were sitting outside. We had some company over last night, uh, sitting out on the deck. A little cool. Mm -hmm. Once the sun went down, yeah, uh, a little cool, but uh, it was nice hanging outside. Gorgeous. And again, sun went down at seven o'clock. Now they I do like say it. they do say today. Here's your daylight savings reminder: you are more likely to die today. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I'll bite. Yeah, I'm tired as hell. I didn't sleep at all last night. I got an hour and a half of sleep. That's not the sun's fault. Ooh. Yeah. If but you are feeling groggy from changing the clocks, here's a fun reminder: you're an adult. You should have gone to bed earlier. I know. <laughs> I, know. I was at but the But it's so tough. <clears throat> You're Man. an adult. Go to sleep earlier. But you are also more likely to die today. And according to the American Heart Association, <sighs> there's always an increase in the number of heart attacks in the first week after we spring forward each year. In fact, uh, today. Why? Nobody's sleeping. Sleep's. Key. There's a study, and, and has found 24% uh, heart attack increase uh, today, like the first Monday after the clock shift. Hmm. Uh 8% bump in the number of strokes in the first couple of days. Rafe, they're still not sure why it happens, but they think it has to do with disrupting the body's internal clock. Hmm. You know, springing forward can be deadly in other ways, too. For example, you know, sleep-deprived drivers have been linked to a 6% increase in fatal car crashes this time of year. Oof. So slow down, be a little more careful this week. In general, accidents are more likely to happen during morning commutes between the hours of 6 and 8. So, yep, good luck. All right, <laughs> thank you. Oh, oh my God. Oh, dead gummit. Hmm. Be careful out there, guys. So you're saying don't go to the gym today? No, go to the gym. Okay. Roll the dice. Only if you've slept, though. Roll the dice. Hey, um, I saw Dune 2 on Friday. Ooh. Guys? Yep. I did not see Dune 1, and I went into it blind. Yeah. Uh, also, you didn't see much. And it was great. <laughs> My boy saw it on Saturday. He said it was. Now, he's he saw the first one. He's a Dune dude. He's a Dune dude. <laughs> he's a Dune. And, uh, yeah, you saw it Friday night, and I you did. texted saying it was wonderful. It, it was an A-. so good. A-. minus. I was the minus because I did not see Dune 1. And so I read online what had happened in Dune 1, and I imagined what that looked like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I went into it, and I also had 
just to be completely transparent, cannabis seltzer. Okay. Okay. She was stoned. I, we bought the ticket. You were out of your mind. I was out of my mind. We were at the B&B Theater in Wildwood, which Ooh, is so chill. Nice, nice theater. We wanted to get some dinner and, um. Where'd you go? We wanted to go to Benedetto's, but it was closed. closed. So wh where, where do we go? We looped around. We went to Panda Express and we ate the fried rice outside the theater in our car. Oh, like you went savages. to the, that's the new Panda Express. It's yeah. so good. Then, um, got a couple of beverages from the gas station right there and just had those. Um, in the parking lot. Anyway. There's the Thai place right there, too. Yep. I know. We didn't have time. And El McGay was over there. And listen to me when I say that I had no clue until we were buying the popcorn at the, you know, at the bar at B&B &B, that the woman said, oh, yeah, I don't have three hours to spare, so I haven't seen Dune 2 yet. So I, I had no Two idea. Two hours and 46 minutes. So long. I went in stoned. I left completely sober after <laughs> I was completely realized. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know for a fact it's two hours and 46 minutes because I tried to time picking up the boy. Yeah. You know, at the theater with his buddy. But, dude, so That's good. Cool. It was great. I right? love the way that We're they played with silence and the loud. Don't go see it in IMAX. Go see it in a regular theater. It's, okay. it's perfect. That well, way. Oh, you don't, do, you don't need to do IMAX? I heard from somebody who went to the IMAX it was too much. It was okay. like over too much. It was overpowering. How stoned were they? I, I, this person's sober. They don't do so anything. So you didn't need to see the first one to really. I didn't. That's awesome. Get. No, I knew who the mother was. I knew what was happening. Right. I, so context. Yeah. You got it. I got it. Great. And I'm a Timothy Chalamet fan. Never. Yeah, he's good. Never mm -hmm. cared about that guy before. He's good. He was good in that new Wonka movie too. Also, he should be in the cast instead of uh, Bill Skarsgård for the new Crow that's going to come out. I was watching him. There was some Eric Draven vibes coming off that Let's game. Let's not get carried away. I, fear, I really felt like it could happen. Let's not really? get carried away. We don't need a Crow that's built like the Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes, I'm you. good on that. I kind of do, though. I, nah. Yeah, isn't... Uh, Let's not let Dune go to your head. Isn't Timothy Chalamet like a little sinewy, like he's skinny? Yeah, he he's probably. And I'm not. I'm not five ten, and he weighs about a hundred pounds, I think. But I've, he's got, you know, he's got that it. He's got yeah. something about him. And I've... anyway, I won't give any spoilers away, um, accidentally, but it's worth it. If and if you, hey, your partner wants you to go, and you're not a Dune dude like me, go. You'll get. Oh, it. was it Tim's idea? Tim wanted to see it. Yeah, he's a Dune this dude. Was, he had a Friday plan. That man started a new job this week. Came home on Ooh. Friday, feeling good. He's like, let's go see Dune 2. And I go, let's go. All right, fine. That's awesome. And he said, I didn't see Dune 1. He saw Dune 1? Oh, yeah. He was watching it for weeks, like, repeat. <laughs> ah. Yeah, because that's one of those movies so you, you got to pay attention to. No. How deep, and how deep does this go? The Dune is not that deep. Dune 1, you got to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. To really get the story. But you don't really need it, huh? Highly suggest wikipedia.com. And just okay, a little refresher. Okay. Yeah. All right. Save some time. Just do the Wikipedia. I have to do that sometimes when there's a big gap between like a, a, a original and a sequel, where I'm like, God, or seasons of stuff. What the hell happened last yeah. season? Before I start yeah. this. Yeah. Usually with TV shows, I got to do that. Yeah, you got to get yourself a refresher. If there, if there is no, here's what happened in the previous season. Right. Where they do like a five minute montage. Which I appreciate. And get you and get you caught up. You kind of have to. Shows like Justified or Breaking, you have to do all those. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Rafe was in Denver. Get mile high, baby. Mile high club. Last couple days over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we had kind of touched upon your adventure of finding the woman's purse. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. JoJo. So you left uh, Wednesday or Thursday? I left Thursday. You left Thursday. Thursday night, we got a text message from you on the uh, Risho group text. Proof Picture of life. Of a purse. Mm -hmm. And in this purse, I mean, was this woman's life? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Social there was, security card. first off, a thousand bucks. Cash. Cash, baby. Couldn't believe it. Social security card. Uh, registration on vehicle. Of course, the driver's license. Car keys. Dude, this woman had everything. Yeah. In that purse. Where'd you find it, first of all? <clears throat> so when I was getting in the Uber at the Denver airport, like the they have like the lanes where there's like taxi pickup, Uber pickup, whatever. It was hanging kind of like, I don't know, they had like one of those, it looks like a zip tie, like one of those metal like fasteners around the pole holding something on. And it, there was like a little bit, it was just hanging on that. And I was like, that's weird. And there were some girls getting in an Uber in front of me, like young girls. Mm -hmm. And it was like a little Wrangler crossbody purse. So I grabbed it and I was like, hey, is this 
Does this belong? Does this belong? Hey, does this you guys? And you know, it was like a eighteen year old girl was like, "Old man, drive!" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "All right, that hurt uh, my feelings." Stranger uh, danger. Yeah. <laughs> Being a bitch right now, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, listen, I've never seen rape like uh, airport rape, so you may you may emit creepy vibes. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I mean it's not very different than daily rape. So uh, airport riz is different than daily riz. Yeah, but uh, not me. I look exactly the same. I mean, I was wearing what I wore to work that day. Uh, I just they, they, they were actually pretty cool. She just said it wasn't her. I just think anytime we just anytime a stranger talks to you in public now, that is. The oh, people yeah. are weirded out. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't theirs. I so I opened it up and then I saw it was like well, clearly not theirs. It was like an older lady. And this you're still and my at Uber's the airport. Yeah, and my Uber's pulling up. And I'm like, ah oh, man, what and I was like, man, there's a ton of cash. And I started, I was like, holy smokes, there's like a social security card and a car keys. I'm like, this is somebody's life in here. And yeah. then I started being like, Man, is this lady dead? Somebody mm -hmm. grab her. Yeah, that's weird. That got me freaked out. But then I was like, my Uber's pulling up. I can either leave this purse with $1,000 cash, which will get stolen, or... For sure. I'm like, I'll find her on social media. Did, we, did you think of maybe going to security? I thought about it, but I was like, I'm not... If I cancel my Uber, I'm out, you know. Yeah. Then I'm out like 40 mm. bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it was. So I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. I was like, I'll just find her on social media. You can find people. Wrong. She's not on it. She's <laughs> born in seventy one, not on any social media. I'm like, I can't find yeah, this lady. Because it was uh, uh, she's that old, huh? Yeah, we would say born in seventy one, he said. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, they said she's seventy one. Yeah, you know, fifty, no. you know, fifty three years old. She just wasn't on anything. Hmm. I checked like I no did, digital footprint. I did some sleuthing on Facebook. Uh in the back of your mind, did you think that it was some kind of like trap? You know, it was a bait purse. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. I looked around. Because I was like, is this like a, what would you do? Is John Keonis about to jump out and be yeah. like, why did you take the purse? <laughs> you know. I was going to find the woman. They were gonna, sure. Uh, yeah, everybody's, you've done well, I wondered if they were like the putting woman. it in there to see people would take the cash out and throw the purse in the trash yeah. or something. Uh, to the point that when I took it off, like a guy pulled up. There was like a waiting for someone. A guy pulled up in a car and I go, is this the guy? Is this guy's going to jump out and be mm. like, hey, yeah, with the camera. Good Samaritan. You did the right thing, or you didn't do the right thing. Mm. Were those girls in front of me a setup to see if I'd be like, hey, is this your purse or what? Uh, so, yeah, that did cross my mind. I heard you guys' uh, theory that <laughs> was like a, would be a very non profitable trap. Like, what if it was somebody trying to get you to meet up and then rob you? And I'm like, yeah, they wouldn't have a That's a big dollars. risk yeah, to put a thousand dollars up to try to rob me for my debit card. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't that. It was a lady who, I don't know, she got in an Uber and just, I don't know how the hell how she left it. And she left it on the bench. Maybe she was having a really yeah, bad Yeah, she week. probably was had two bags or something. and Or maybe kids. Tying her shoe. You and, know, like, who knows? Yeah. I, I know that, like, where my bag is on me at all times. Like, my purse is the one thing. I mean, it's probably, like, your wallet, right? Yeah, like, that you thing. Can, you know where your, <clears> what, but especially your wallet is. She has $1,000. Yeah. So when thousand I met up with her, I found her. I called I went through her whole purse, and I was like, man, there's nothing in here that was of use. Because the phone number was like, it was like a government agency. There was like a piece of paper with phone numbers on it, but it was like not, it was like the DMV, whatever. It wasn't anyone personal. Yeah, the picture you took, uh, there was like a yeah. piece of paper on there with, with Denver numbers on there. But the woman, the, her driver's license was from New Mexico? New Mexico. So I finally called Progressive. Because you had an insurance card. I had an insurance card, gave them their, her policy number, and I was like, hey, this lady's whole life is in this purse, and wherever she is, she's probably having the worst day of her life. And I was like, I know you can't give me her info, but can you give her mine and have her call me, and I'll meet her, I'll bring her stuff. That's cool. And the lady was like, actually, hold on, I'll get her in a three-way call. Whoa. So they called her and then clicked over, so I was on the line with her and her insurance agent, and I was like, I have all your stuff. Was she freaking out? Did she yeah. know her stuff was missing? Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, my God. I just went back to the airport, and I was like hoping it was going to be on the bench where I left it, and I was freaking out, and then I went to Lost and Found, and I'm so glad you took it because she's like, I honestly don't trust Lost and right, Found. I right, go, right. Honestly, me neither. I hate saying that, but giving Lost and Found $1,000 cash, even at an airport, 
you're still rolling the dice. I think it's 50-50, yep. man, that you're getting that cash back. You might get the rest of your stuff back. How long was it gone before she realized... I think I don't know. I think she got to her hotel and realized she didn't have it, oh, and then hopped back and then, but then had to take a shuttle because she's like, I have no money, I have nothing. That's why I was. She's like, I can't even get an Uber to get to you, and I was like, It's all good. Just tell yeah. Me I was going to ask you, how did you return it? Did you go to her? I went to her because two reasons. She was traveling alone, and I'm right. like, probably like, I mean, you know, I'm trying to be conscious that I'm like a stranger and a guy. And not be like, yeah, meet me here. Right. You know, I have all your whole life. You know, and even though I was staying at a hotel, like she could have met me in the lobby or whatever. But I was like, just tell me where you're at. I'll meet you in your hotel lobby. I'll bring it to you. So I brought it to her, and she was very, she was super nice, very grateful. Um, she was there to buy a a car for her daughter. She was alone, traveling alone with that much cash. Yeah. And I was like, this is not a good idea. I didn't try to lecture or anything, but I was like. And she was literally like, I came to pick up a truck. That's why I have all these things in here. Like, I'm buying, this is to get the registration and the title. And it looked I'm, like she had documentation geez. to do, yeah. okay, to make a big purchase. Yeah. And she said the money was gas, all, the cash was gas money to drive it to Kansas to give to her daughter, who just had a baby and was like, didn't have a car and was having a hard time. Oh, she, so she's gonna, wow. she went from New Mexico to Denver to buy the car <clears throat> to then drive it to Kansas. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. did you lecture her? Did you go, how could you be so careless? <laughs> nah. I just gave her a hug. She gave me a hug, and she cried. She was like... Uh, did she really? Yeah, she was no. sweet. She was like... Uh, she was screwed, man. She was in a city with no money. Yeah. No ID. I got the vibe that maybe that, you know... All her credit cards. All, everything. All debit card. Golly. Everything. God, everything was in that purse. Yeah. That's a weird everything. situation to be in. Did she offer you a? Uh, she tried to give me fifty bucks reward. She she took a fifty out. And you're like, no, I already took a lot more than that. Thank you. And though. I was like, ah, oh, it's fine. You only had three hundred dollars in there, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did not accept. I just gave it back to her. That's really cool, what a, man. What a gentleman. No, seriously, that's awesome. Because I was like, five percent tip. <laughs> I might as well be zero. Yeah, a little light, <laughs> lady. <laughs> 50 bucks, no, huh? I, Might as well just be zero. I got the vibe that that was all the money she had. So I was like, you, we're good. You just take it. And hey, you got one in the bank, man. Dude, that's karma. awesome. That's what you I got said. One, you got one I'm going to get some good point parking, in dude. the bank. Yeah. That's, that's great. Really I'm great, banking man. some karma on it. Uh, she was... She's very lucky that you found it. For real. Yeah. Yeah. Like, out of all the people, wouldn't you want Ray Williams to a, find that's your a, purse? That's a busy airport. Yeah. That's why I was like, man, if I leave this, it's gone. The odds of, like, if I don't make this my problem, I'm basically telling this lady, like, sorry, lady, your life's screwed. Your identity's stolen. Yeah. And I had, I'll be honest, I had that moment where I'm like, oh, do I make this my problem or do I just hang it back up? Yeah, we've listen. My yeah. wife has gotten jewelry swiped from her uh, out of a check bag. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, like I'll out of check. a out of a check bag. Uh, I don't check anything. I'm not willing to lose. This was a lesson learned. This was like like a nice like necklace that was given to her by her mother. Oh man, swiped along with the other jewelry <laughs> that was in the bag, and you go to file a like a claim, and the airline goes, ah. Ah, you can mm. fill out this form. We'll see. Chances are you're not getting it. Chances are you're not getting anything back. But uh, yeah, fill out this form. We'll file it. It's like when you get your car broken into mm -hmm. in the city. You call the cops. Now I don't even know if they show up anymore. The cops. I think it is. They have a laugh sound effect whenever you call. That's all. It, yeah. <laughs> do they? Ah. <laughs> no. Do they? No. Honest, honest question. If you get your car broken into in the city, do they show up anymore? I'm I, sure. I don't know. If there's availability, I bet they do. Last time I got my car broken into, and this was a couple of years ago in the city, uh, I'd call the police. Mm -hmm. And uh, the officer, who was very nice, was like, hey, you're lucky I even came because we don't really show up to these much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe that. We have other things. We have other we have other things we're doing. Right. Yeah. I'm sure if you call it that one time where there's somehow they're 
in a low moment, you could probably get a hold of somebody to come get you. But but I feel like it was uh, when we lost the jewelry, and this was this was 15 years ago. We told I think it was American Airlines, and I felt like that scene from The Big Lebowski when they're like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get every detective on this one." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gonna work in overtime. Gonna get you your jewelry back. Okay. The rug's gone. We're working around the clock. Yeah, working around. Yeah, working at shifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> working at shifts. Yeah, we'll get that necklace back. Yeah, man. It was a good ending. She seemed like a sweet lady, and I felt like uh, it felt like she was at a point in her life where she was scraping together everything she had, trying to help her daughter out. Yeah. And probably was just the fact that she was traveling alone to do mm, all this, yeah. too. I'm like, man, she's out here. Was she staying at a nice hotel? I was decent. She said, I'd like to reward you. Mm-hmm. The fun way. <laughs> <laughs> now that I would have taken. Because <laughs> that costs nothing. I can give you 50 bucks so we could do this another way. <laughs> tacos. Yes, yeah. tacos. Buy you swim at the tacos. pool. Of course. Okay, so how was, your, how was your flight? Fine? Flight was good. Flight was good. Uh, you know, there's been a rash of things happening to airplanes. You know, uh, last week a tire fell off a plane uh, out in San Francisco. Yeah, video that's... of that happening. Did you see what actually happened with the tire? No. So a video of a plane taking off. One of the landing gear tires fell off as it was taken off. The tire went into the parking lot of the airport. Wow. And like These are crushed tiny. a car. Oh, my God. Tight. Those are tiny little tires and the velocity. I did have a. That's wild. Was anybody in the car? No, thank God. <laughs> yeah, just imagine, thank God. Just imagine like coming out. You're having a bad day. And you're just like, cool. just want to get. Home. These things can't get worse. And there's just a one of those fat double airplane tires just sitting on the roof of your car, completely crushed. Yeah, yeah I you mean, look around whole, and it's only your car. Or worse, you, car. you don't know what happened. It rolled over your car like a monster truck and kept going. And the, whole so like, the whole cavity of your car is crushed glass everywhere. Yeah, when you, get, when you get back from a flight, you just, man, I just want to get in my car when I get home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to put on some tunes. I just bought this car. Finally got my dream car. Corvette. <sighs> it's be ass awesome. man on the license plates. Yeah. <laughs> I did have on my flight, and I know we all had a different version of this this week, but I did have someone tap me on the shoulder mid-flight. I was nodding off and be like, hey, man, I'm listening to you right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> cool, man. Love that. That's hilarious. Creepy, but cool, man. Yeah, because yeah. you left after the show on Thursday. I'm listening. Yeah, so I'm listening. So he's listening to the Thursday show? Yeah. I'm listening to Thursday's podcast oh, yeah. right now. Freak of the week. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, kind of like smushed your shoulder, like kind of like he did. squeezed it. And mm. He came from way in the back of the plane. Wow. And just was like, gave me a little squeeze. And I was like, thought it was the flight attendant. And he goes, hey, man. Still had his headphones in. Didn't take him out. I'm listening yeah, to I you right now. <laughs> and I go, funny show. Cool, bro. Yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. That happens, like, when you take flights to St. Louis, which is cool. That's kind of a, a cool thing about, you know, being on this show. Is like, I usually, about six or seven people, as I'm getting on or getting off the plane, well, they, yeah, yeah, that's hey, cool. man, I just listened to the podcast, or I got the podcast downloaded to listen to on the plane, which is cool to know that people are, like, you know. Taking especially it with sounds like taking it with well, especially, yeah. Uh, you know, we are like one big ambient mm -hmm. on a plane. True yeah. that. Just put us on and fall right asleep. That's right. True that. Last time that happened, I was at the Eat Well in the Valley and uh, doing some shopping. Yeah. Guy uh, was in a in the uh, aisle with me. He goes, dude, I'm listening to you right now. And my response was, that's weird. And I walked away. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. That's, that's a nice response, to That's too. weird. Well, I mean... It is weird, but it's also cool. Very cool. I always ask if I could listen too. Yeah, I, I don't believe you. So, so listen. After so, an engine, an engine flame during mid-flight last week. The tire fell off the plane during takeoff. Um, American Airlines. It was all that was all American Airlines. That need, they needed a break from the from the bad publicity. And then on Friday, <laughs> Friday said, "Hold my beer." So two United flights had issues at the end of last week. Mm -hmm. On Friday morning, a United flight from Memphis to Houston landed but skidded off the runway. 
The aircraft wound up in a grassy area of Houston's Bush Intercontinental Airport. All passengers were, were deplaned safely, bus to the terminal. Friday afternoon, a United flight from San Francisco to Mexico City had to make an emergency landing in L.A. because of a hydraulic issue. What the hell is going on? I yeah. don't know. I don't know. We did have, I will say, when it's I took weird, off from St. Man. Louis, I kind of forgot about this. I think maybe I texted Learn about it. But there was a, I started thinking about all the plane stuff we talk about because. It's been a lot. There was a delay. I got there and they're like, oh, the flight's delayed. And everyone was like, I heard we're waiting on a pilot. You know, the scuttlebutt starts. But then the lady got on the thing and she's like, there's a mechanical issue and engineers are looking at it. They didn't say what. But they didn't Do get you it. you want to know? I don't know, man. Well, the thing was, is like, it was only like a 30, maybe 35 minute delay. It wasn't bad. But then I was thinking about it because they didn't switch planes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They didn't wheel that one out and wheel a new one in. They're just like, we're just waiting on the go from engineering that everything's the mechanical problems fixed. And I was like, man, I almost liked the pilot story better. Yeah. Right. I almost like just telling me the pilot's late. Yeah, I'd rather mm -hmm. that than a mechanical issue. Last time yeah. there was a mechanical issue on a plane we were on, the story was there's a light that's on the console that's not going off. I'm thinking that's probably important. Nah. It's the oil light. I just pour water <laughs> on it. That's a gas light. It. It's like the genie lamp. There's a light that can, the pilots can't get the light off. I go, hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's on for a reason, but I listen. I'm not. A, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a an, an aeronautics engineer. I don't You're know not? what the hell I'm doing. Hmm. They're like the darn engine lights on my again. Life is, my life is in your hands. But here is a, a passenger talking about the. Uh, it, well, he's United Flight making the emergency landing last week. A passenger told reporters he heard a loud pop when they tried to make a turn, saying the plane appeared to be going too fast. That's kind of what it sounded like as I had my uh, my, earbud, my earbuds in. Um, but then just actually feeling it, it was just like this, this huge jerk. And it was like, you know, what was that? Oh, I didn't know you were on the plane, Scott. Hey! To the point where I was like, you know, let me take my stuff out and try to figure out what was going on. I was like, are we still in the air? Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. And this got me thinking with, uh, you know, with all this airline stuff going on. And I, I get it that tipping culture is out of control. Everybody's asking for a tip. But should we start tipping flight attendants? Yeah, for drinks. When they help should us. Should we just like, hey, as we're leaving, here's a five. Like, as we're all getting off the plane, here's a five. Oh, no, man. I don't know about that. I, But I want the option because, I mean, I always get a drink, you know. Let me be able to tip this these people. Most flight attendants on most airlines can accept tips. Now, the question is, should you tip a flight attendant? What about the pilot? Can I tip the pilot? They make enough money. Do they? I, that's something that I'm genuinely asking Pilots right do now. well. No, I know, but not as well as like they used to. I feel like that's something that I've seen online that pilots really? are preaching about. That they are not making as much money like as they once did. Wow. So you know, the percentage. Yeah. For a while, they were raising it, trying to get more people to <laughs> That's the person I want paid it's extremely boo. well. Boo. Mm -hmm. Whatever that pilot needs, get them. Sleep, money. Tip. Yeah, it says the average pilot makes 134000 and the top 25% earn more than two hundred eight. So that is down. So it used to be norm to make close to two hundred. I think. See? This sucks. Leave the pilots out of this for a second. Okay. All right. Flight attendants. How much does a bus driver make? Look up the average bus driver salary, because that's all they really are. They're just sky bus drivers, and we. Yeah, I'm gonna say do a little more. A little they don't bit. Have that cool stop sign thing. A little bit, but, a little they, more. but let me tell you something. And I will make this argument. You think behavior on planes is out of control? <laughs> on hey, buses? Yeah, take the double decker seven dollar Greyhound from Indianapolis to Washington D.C. and see how the behavior is. See who's riding that. Yeah. That guy. And that guy doesn't have. A bulletproof door between him and the guy who wants to stab He's him out in the, the neck. Open. He's we never out hear in the about open, that. dude. There's people taking a dump in the middle of the aisle right. all the time on a Greyhound. You don't hear about that. It doesn't make the national news. The bus drivers are the here. They're dealing. They're they're on the front lines. Yeah, and they got their back turned. Back turned. They're doing everything. They got a big the, mirror though. That's what protects them as a mirror. But they yeah, can this, kick somebody out onto the road. Yeah, you know? there's, but there's no. 
bus attendants helping them out. Well, There's the nobody average, walking up and down the aisles giving little Gardetto snacks to people. According to this, it says the average Greyhound bus driver makes 275000 a year. What? Uh, no, no, uh, no, no, I was going to say, uh, what the uh, hell? 39000 a year. 39 k <laughs> I am getting my CDL now. A little now. different. So, pilot's going to be just fine. <laughs> Moving on. So, you have no sympathy for the pilots. <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> You on every no fly list now. Congratulations. I, oh. It's not that I don't have sympathy for the pilots. I'm just saying, like, why do you want to tip the the flight attendants why? have to deal with gross people? As do we all. And I love flight attendants. I'm not trying to not get you money, but I'm just pushing back. I think I'm going to start tipping. That's like saying really? doc, the doctors need more I money. I think I'm going to start tipping every <laughs> flight. But wh that's not going to do anything for you. You're. What what is happening? For they you get your snacks. They get your drinks. They clean up messes. They keep you safe. I don't think it's going to hurt to give a fiver on the way out of the plane. Okay. Yeah, the average is sixty three thousand for flight attendants. The problem is it's it. so it's so goddamn expensive to fly already. Yeah, that's why it's I'm, like putting. I hate that. I'm like, man, it's all cashless now. Feel oh, I can't accept cash. Just pay them better. Right. You're already charging for everything from the bag to how much. If I have sunglasses on, that's like a, just a eight dollar sunglass surcharge. Yeah, like, yeah, sunglasses on your head, that's an extra eight bucks. Pull yeah. the visor down. It's like everything, other than Southwest, which I still love, because it's a young democracy in the sky. <laughs> Every airline, it's an upcharge for everything, dude. Like you want to sit towards the front of the, even a middle seat towards the front of the plane costs an extra twenty seven bucks on like God, an American Airlines. You want an exit row? That's a hundred bucks. Yeah, dude, it's my crazy. Room. Where does it end? Somebody brings up, are you tipping nurses? Yeah. No, no, Let's I'm, I'm not saying, I, listen, I know tipping culture is out of control. It is. I like, I give, here's what I want. Give these flight attendants more freedom to say whatever the hell they want. I want to see somebody get nuts. You know what I'm saying? People like, are getting nuts, no, and yeah. that's why yeah. flight attendants ones. need to get I want the, a little, little extra. I want them to be able to cuss somebody out and not get reprimanded for it. That's what I want instead oh. of giving them a five. They do. Oh, good. I've had plenty of sassy flight attendants, like, giving the business to people. And I'm here for it. Strong arm that way. Because I don't think the money's With all help. the stories that we have of people going nuts on planes. Oh. You know the best seat in a plane? is the very last row. Yeah. In a Southwest flight. When they're all strapped in back there, you get some hot gas. Yeah, man. It's like being seated next to the server station at a restaurant. Like, they're talking trash back there, dude. Sometimes you can get a little free alcohol, too, if you're cool. They're talking trash back there, and I'll I, I'll get in on it. I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. I'll sit in the aisle seat and lean around the corner and be like, oh, you know, girl, Chad, <laughs> row 18, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> yeah, he's this close. Too. He's this close, because I will backhand somebody. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm loving it. And you go, Charlene, you go. <laughs> Let me get on that. Can I get on that? Mm -hmm. Telephone real quick. Let me it do an announcement. The yeah, yeah they're a little, they're a little coffee clutch back there. Oh, they're back Raves, there. Yeah. They're by the bathroom, Raves, yeah. Rave sitting backwards on yeah. a seat. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody Scrambling. thinks I'm going to the bathroom. I'm just sitting back there while they're pulling out all the soda carts, and I'm Ooh. just like, tell me what's going on up in front of the plane. Who's giving? Who's the problem? Yeah. Who's giving you guys a hard time up there? You're like a fake air marshal back yeah. there. Yeah. You're getting sassy in the galley. I'm the gossip it. marshal. <laughs> and I'm here for it. <laughs> now let's start tipping flight attendants. I'm, get a badge, I'm gonna start doing All it, right. and it's gonna become a thing. They deserve it. Well, yeah. well the they arbiter of it. taste has spoken. The arbiter of taste has spoken. All right. Uh, today, guys, is uh, National Promposal Day. Oh, great! Mm. National Promposal Day. I don't know if you guys are gonna celebrate, but I wish this I could have been thing. part of promposal culture. Back in my day, I went to my yeah. senior prom by myself. No, I... The sock up. I went to the sock up by myself. No, but, you know, I was... You just had to hope to God you were getting asked. Yeah? And then when they didn't ask, you just went by yourself, and, and that was cool. And you guys know what a promposal is. The I mean, billboard. This is, yeah. this is not just asking somebody out to prom. This is you have to make a big deal out of it. Wow. Yeah, oh, dude. yeah. I don't Money think this was spent. a thing whenever I was in. Would you guys service. have done this? No. No way. Right. Our 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 generation didn't we weren't into this at no, all. No, you had to have the balls to just walk up to a chick. Right. And ask. We didn't have the money or creativity. You go from me. <laughs> you go from me. Yeah, basically that's a mine one. You could barely squeak the words out. So I was in between uh 
So I went to my I went to junior prom and senior prom. Um, now I, th- I think at some schools now the junior and senior proms are combined. Yeah, that, mine had always. Yeah, been. we had ours were combined. Oh, I mean, yours our were school combined. Was so small, school. we had to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, we had a junior prom, which was at the school, mm-hmm. and then the senior prom was at a hotel. So cool. At a hotel yeah. ballroom. Yeah. That's how St. Louis proms were. So Columbia, Illinois, we just had it at the Falls. Yeah. I think they still have it there. But I got to go to a St. Louis, like somebody, some guy I dated from Oakville Ooh. invited me. And we got to go to the downtown Drury or wherever the hell it was. And dude, it was so the cool. Drury. That's so cool. The so Drury. I guess, so, you know, school's out in May. So school ends in May. So I guess proms are what, April? Yeah. Or as it starts getting a little warmer. Proms are in April. Mm-hmm. So I guess, I guess now is the time that, that those, you know, promposals, which even it pains me to even say. Are there Thank any other, you, it, you guys are all dudes. I don't know. It just sounds. <sighs> are there any other. Maybe that's my curmudgeon coming out. 39-year-old hotties out there, ladies listening, that you see the prom pop-up dress shops and you kind of like, you want to go try on some things. I think I might do it this Like year. you walk into... Yeah, I just want to kind of see how I would look in some of these cool dresses. I bet you they have a section for... For old... Pathetic old women. Oh, yeah. man. I will uh, shop there. Let me show you the pathetic <laughs> old women. Uh, there ma'am, you go. Uh-huh. come this way. <laughs> I'm down. You're like the, the old lady in Requiem for a Dream who thinks she's going on a game show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm pretty. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's going to ask me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's sad. <laughs> but but I but I was uh, so I had my high school girlfriend and we had broken up. One of the seven thousand times we broke up, mm-hmm. and I asked somebody else to prom because there was bastard. a good there was a good three month <laughs> gap. Yeah, there was a good three month gap. Oh no, dude, you rolled the dice. And then we got back together. Oh no! So you had asked the other girl, and then you got back together with your ex. Yeah. So then, what did you do? I rescinded my invite. Oh. I rescinded my my prom proposal. It was a prom disposal. <laughs> what a dick move on my part! Like, really? What yeah, did well, you do it? Close, yeah, to the day. Well, uh, like two weeks. <sighs> How'd you do it? How'd you break that news to somebody? Be honest. A note. I could tell it's not good by the way you're. The whole thing wasn't good. I know, but I want to know. Did you like like, go to the girl's house and be like, "Hey, I wanted to come to you as a man and tell Mm. you, like, yeah, I I know, I did it at school. Yeah, I did it at in person. person. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's nice. All right. She was not happy. Sure. Uh, She had already bought a dress. Uh, She's in love with you. I bet. You broke her heart. No, the one. no, we were we were we were gonna just gonna go as friends, kind of. Oh, really? Yeah, uh-huh. that's not a thing. You go and it's romantic. People, that, I wasn't looking for romance. Mm, she probably was. There's a, people that go to prom as friends. One of them is always wanting the romance, and the other one is not. That's what's happening she there. Bought a dress. Yeah. She bought a dress. She bought a dress. I had to go by herself. I don't know that she went. What? <laughs> so mad <laughs> oh, for this woman. Oh, oh. <laughs> she still thinks about that to this day. You just asked that. Question oh, dude, it gets even worse. Oh it, God! Dude, uh. This even a, it gets worse. The story gets even worse. So I, I had asked her probably around this time, this time of year. We, my, my girlfriend, and I had been broken up again, th- probably three months. Right. You know, I thought I moved on. Asked this girl, she said yes, fine. We got back together, me and the other girl. Between obviously the time that I asked her and the prom, which was late May, because we got out of, we got out of school in, in mid June. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's late. School in New York went to like mid June. June like fifteenth or sixteenth was like the end, like the end of school. Uh, so uh, yeah, and I think she knew it was coming. Like he's back together with his girlfriend. Like yeah, makes sense. How it, long did you get back with your girlfriend and then? Tell her. Probably about it. I waited until two weeks before the prom to officially tell her. Because mm. you weren't. But you thinking. were already back with your girlfriend for how long? Probably a month. Okay. Oh. You're testing it out to see if it was going to yeah, go well? Yeah, it was well. going to stick or we were going to break up again. Mm. Okay, okay. It's a tough situation. Player. Player yeah. hater. Okay, so <laughs> she doesn't go to prom. And here's where it really gets bad. And, I, and I, I'm <clears throat> very... I was young and dumb and immature, and this was horrible. Ugh. 
she wore the dress to school. Say what? As like a protest of As you? As like a protest of me. <laughs> Look what you're missing, Scott. Whoa, Masudo. wait. Stop. What? She what? Does she look good? She no. wore her prom dress. Oh. She's like, money spent, Scott Rizzuto. Yes. So I guess this is my prom. I'm not going to lose money on this. Wow. Everybody Fourth hour geometry is my prom now. That's right. Damn, dude. Damn, dude, right? Right? You said she didn't look good? That's some swim fan type stuff there, bro. I didn't think it was I didn't think it was a nice dress, I'll be honest with you. Was it short? Do you remember? What long? was her? Did yeah, she was wrong. why did she explain to people why she wore a prom dress to school? Uh, I'm sure. Because every kid did she have Scott snarled at no. written in like blood <laughs> and then like a cross through on the gown. I just wish you walked through the hallway and everyone's like, shame on you. Shame. 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 Oh, shame. Man. Oh, what man, an angle. Bro. Back in our day, the dresses were long, and now they're super short. And it br bums me out, because that was like something as a girl that I, I When else, besides your wedding day, really, do you get to wear this voluptuous dress? Yeah, I had you know? my suit had very short legs. It was basically booty shorts. Really? I, yeah. yeah, Mike's right. I, I rescinded the, uh, the yeah. invite to her. Mm. Rescinded. Ah. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, not a proud moment. Uh, I have since apologized. I and? did apologize. Okay. I don't think apology was accepted, but fine. Hmm. Is there a chance you could have had, like, hey, obviously my girlfriend's going, but come with us. And we're going to do, you know, I'll take you out to dinner still. It'll be fun. Yeah, you, you could have had a three-way. You could have got, like, no. taken two dates. Have you ever, did you ever apologize to her? Yeah, I did. Like, at later? Yeah, yeah, I did. How'd that go? It did not go well. Is this the woman that tried to kill you that one No, time? that oh, was the girlfriend that I got back okay, together with. To uh, Worth the, it. So you you had two potential women that wanted to kill you at the same time. <laughs> cool, man. You had the one you dated who tried to kill you while Multiple dating. Multiple times, yes. And then the one that you broke her heart and she wore a dress to school. Huge red flag. <laughs> yeah. Huge red flag, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good on her, I guess, for sticking it to you. She owned but, it, and uh, I deserved it. But that is a... That's alarming. That's alarming. Maybe she was just cool. She's yeah. like, I don't give a crap. I'm going to wear this cool dress. Yeah. He's missing out on something cool I don't know. here. Yeah, I'm going to say no on that. <laughs> like, I usually have your back on some of this stuff, but I'm going to say that was definitely, like, not a cool thing as much as it was a, like, go F yourself. Yeah, Which, this was a definite kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I, I appreciate it. It's kind of cool, I guess, but still, red flag. Mm. I, di I did wind up apologizing in person. How long later? Probably a year. What'd she say? It was one of those dismissive, fine, I'm fine. Mm. And I know it wasn't, but I, you know. I mean, carrying this weight hey. with you for so yeah, long. Yeah, at least you apologize. Do you yeah. think maybe it, <laughs> we should do an on-air apology? We should get her on the horn? Let's get her on the horn. Find her? I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you what her last name is now. I'm hoping she's oh, we'll married find and has Rafe kids. Williams, We're we'll not going to dig this up. He found that woman's purse <laughs> and maybe found it's her. Worth, so. 20 minutes from now, I'll have her on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it might be worth it. No, I don't think that's a great idea. <laughs> what could go wrong? Everything. No, I mean, what really could go wrong? I, I couldn't even tell you what her last name is now. Mm. Again, this was 1996. It's Ferguson. I just found her. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rochelle Gutierrez. Yes. Rochelle Ferguson, you found her? Yeah. Damn, get yeah. her on the phone. She, Prom she changed Knight. her name to Fergie and is now the lead singer of the Black Eyed Peas. Oh, wow. So she did okay. Yeah. She did all right. Handle, handles Prom Girl 96. Bang Josh Dumahal. Did somebody ask you to prom? Yes. Well, I, you were the prom queen, weren't you? I was. Wow. I was the prom queen of my class. Yes. It was so cool. We had junior prom queen. And so my friend Flavio Rovertoni and I, we reigned supreme. And uh, yeah, I, I got asked. Flavio Rovertoni? Flavio Rovertoni. He was the Sounds sweetest like cool guy. Great basketball show. player, if I remember. I am Flavio. Very smart. Rova. Um, no, I got asked sophomore year by my friend Kyle, and that was really fun because he was upperclassman. So I felt really cool going. And then junior year went with my boyfriend, and then senior year went by myself. And I got to tell you, I had a really good time going Senior stag. year you went by yourself? I did. That's the year you're supposed to go with somebody. We broke up. We broke up. I, how and long I wore before? green sneakers Who, you and this Flavio? gorgeous white dress. No, no, no. Flavio and I weren't dating or anything. We were oh. How long before queen. prom did you break up? Couple months. So that means you were out there and available for another guy to ask you. I was, and nobody, and nobody asked. asked you. Mm -mm. 
Nobody asked the prom queen. And you were queen. the queen? And I was the queen. And guys, wow. I, I had a glow up in my senior year. I got Nobody asked the prom very, queen skin to the prom. Up. Were you expecting somebody to ask you? No, I wasn't. Did you want somebody to ask Maybe you? There was a person was. I wanted to ask. It was the guy that I wanted to date, and he didn't ask. Why didn't you ask? Because I was like, whatever. Queen doesn't ask. The queen doesn't ask. I respect that. And I had a, I danced with everybody. Did you know you were going to be queen? No. Dude, I thought... You knew you were nominated, though, right? I, yeah, I was on the court. I, all the all the chicks that were nominated were so great. I was I thought for real like pig's blood was gonna dump all like over me. Like you were the joke vote. That I was the joke vote. Oh, Honestly, no, and I'll, I'll own this. Like Jessica Heat and Heather Everding and Amy Ledbetter, all of them should have won. Like I wish we all could have been queen because they were the gorgeous ones, the fun ones, the smart ones. I was the idiot that was like the class clown. You know that. That was okay. a nice lie you just Dang. told. What? That she wished everyone could have been. Oh, queen. and by the That's way, a nice retro. Andrew's like, I don't even remember her last name now. No, the the chick that I asked. Yeah. I don't know what her last name now would be. Sure. Yeah. You're thinking she's married. Maybe you I'm were hoping, for her whole life. I'm hoping she's married. Her husband might have taken her name. It's worth looking. Yeah. It's worth looking into. We'll Is find, it? We'll find her. Don't you worry about <laughs> Just a nice on air apology. It'll be good. <laughs> What about you guys? Did you uh, ever get asked by chicks? No. <clears throat> no. Did you ask a girl? Yeah. I asked girl um, because I had a girlfriend, so I took her both times. And then my sophomore year actually was asked by a girl, Nakia. She asked me. Oh, you got asked. Well, uh -huh. look at you. Uh -huh. anyway. Nokia? As a soft <laughs> Nokia. Yeah, heir She's of the so Nokia fun. empire. Yeah. yeah. Tight. Uh, yeah, so I got to go my sophomore year. That was a lot of fun. As a youngster. Sweet. Look at you. Did yeah. you ask a girl? I asked lots of girls. Did they Some say, say yes? yes. Some didn't. Gotta get your... Gotta put so did you go to your senior prom with somebody? Yeah, I went to senior prom. With, I had a girlfriend at the time and went with her. Junior prom. Yes. Had a different girlfriend. Went with her. She was like the homecoming queen. I dated a girl who was a year ahead of me, and she was like... But then we broke up, and she had to come back as the retiring queen, and I was... Which was my senior year, and mm -hmm. I had to walk with her. As oh. like the the king and the retiring queen. That was oh, your so ex? you were prom wow. king? Homecoming. Homecoming king. And that was kind of like a weird... Like, it wasn't an elected thing. Like, I knew before I went... That I was going to be escort. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like they didn't announce it the way they do, where they, like, line the girls up and make them all compete with each other. And the dudes. And we didn't do that, though. Mm. I kind of knew going in that I was going to be, like, escorting out the old queen. And, and But my friend Liz won, home, who I loved. Mm -hmm. I've known her since kindergarten. Same deal. She was cool. Had a glow up. <laughs> I was pushing. Yeah. We were lobbying. And she won, and it was like, couldn't happen to a better person, and I got to dance with her at the end of the night, and it nice. was awesome. Do you remember any nerves before asking? Yeah, dude. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked. Every dance, sweetheart dance, homecoming dance. You know, we had Sadie Hawkins, which was your only reprieve as a guy. Yeah. Because a girl had to ask you. Yeah, we didn't have that. But every, it's always the guy asking for homecoming, junior it, prom, senior prom. And the, the lead up, the longer you waited, you watched the pool get shallower yeah. and shallower. Yeah. And you're just yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah, I was oh, a procrastinator. Ah, Jeremy. <laughs> you going with Jeremy? <laughs> you guys got a freaking Mustang. <laughs> oh, the Mustang. The Mustang people always got souped up. All the uh -huh. girls in my class got picked off by upperclassmen so fast. Like, when you're like freshman, sophomore, you're really at a hot, super disadvantage. Oh, yeah, you are. Because it's like, ah, the guy with the yellow 69 <laughs> Mustang swooped in, got the hottest girl in our class. And I'm like, that sucks. Jason Doerr, thanks a lot. Who I love, good friend. Still pissed me off in the moment. And I'm like, take the girls in your class, man. You're going to come down here sniping all these underclass girls. And it, it got dicey, man. Yeah, I just remember for homecoming, you know, having to ask a girl and just being like... Did you get turned down ever? Uh, yeah. That's so pretty sad. Brutal. I don't yeah, think I would have cool. turned anyone down. I mean, that's yeah. my problem, but... <sighs> Boy, I bet Freshman years nice, would have loved to know that. I, I seriously... Freshman year, I got turned down. Oh, nobody asked me freshman and year. And it was, it was brutal. 
Because it was... Nah! <laughs> they didn't do it the nice way? <laughs> no, because I remember... I they remember said, nah? Uh, basically. Uh, nah. nah. I mean, you could tell the uncomfortableness. And my How'd mistake, you ask? My mistake. It was somebody I really didn't know. You just went for it. Good for I you. just went for it. Yeah, yeah. dude. Awesome. Every goddamn movie we watch... They all like, I just went for it. She was on the volleyball team. Hell yeah. Heck yeah. That's yeah. the level of confidence everybody needs right now. Just go for it. She sat in front of me. Ask the, per ask the person that I wish. I wish that I would have had the balls to like go up to the guy that I thought was the hottest in mm. my class who I loved, never got to like be with or anything. I should have gone up to him and been like, will you take me to homecoming? Like a little psycho, you know? I wish I would have had that confidence. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would have gone great. No, probably yeah. wouldn't have. But you know what? That's cool, though. She sat in front of me. Because I did Her do last that. name was Riccardi, and I, oh, we always sat yeah. as a Rizzuto. The Riccardi <laughs> sat in front of me. Hey, Riccardi, want a party? Yeah. <laughs> nah. And yeah. I could tell it was like. You know, we, I know she's hot because an Italian last right. night. I could see her in Lacey my brain. Riccardi. I could see her. She was tanned. She probably brown, had, like, giant, highlights. Way tall. Like, way tall. Brown hair, blonde highlights. Italian. Whale tail. Yeah. Whale tail? Ooh, she had yeah. a Playboy Too bunny. Early, this was uh, 96. So this not, is, no, yeah. the 90, 92. Oh, no, I absolutely. graduated in 96, so this is freshman okay. year in 92. Yeah, the whale tail was mm. not there and yet. And that was not a thing yet. That was no. 10 years later. That was not a thing yet. But, yeah, and I could see it was very uncomfortable for her. Mm. Well, then you had to. What sucks And then that I had to sit with her. Yeah, dude, that part sucks. That's even Like, better. that's a big. It was a relationship changer. <laughs> we had always, like, joke around with each other. I thought we kind of had. That's like, a, a, you were in the right to have that thought. If so you, you weren't able to. Was, read, I never saw her outside of class. It was just we had, like, a classroom thing. But you never were able to get that back, the the fun. and It was never the same, Scott. Oh, that's God. the risk that you it was. We I rolled the dice and, you know, didn't happen. Yeah, man. I stayed home that I stayed home that year. Sorry. I leaned out. Homecoming for most people was home staying for me. Yeah. Just go to the dance, even if you're. Nah. Alone. So who'd you have go accept the award for you for homecoming king? Nah, I never never was homecoming <laughs> king. No. <laughs> Not what the Wikipedia of your school says. Uh huh. No, we and now daily. And and now, kids go stag all the time. It's great. And we're going huge groups. My sister was as part of that culture now where and she was in prom and homecoming she just went with a bunch of girls and they had a blast yeah i yeah, went my stag son. those were some of the f most fun dances honestly my son went stag to his you right. know his homecoming this year and i go who are you taking he goes no i'm just going with some buddies <laughs> i did <A> loser what? <laughs> take after your old man i was no. uh, <laughs> i always did well with those because i was one of the few guys that would dance like, I didn't care. Like, guys were so weird about dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't care. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm, the girls are all out there. So I'm going out there. Just the sheer numbers game, I'm going to do okay. That's great. It was fun. Yeah. I went a I couple know. solos. It was a, uh, it was not <clears throat> cool to go. It was noticed when you went with nobody. Yeah. In Different time. It's not as noticeable now. No, now it's not. And again, it's very acceptable. My yeah. niece and nephew who are of high school age, they didn't go to, they haven't gone to homecoming or any dances yet. And I'm, every time I see them, especially my niece, Anna, I'm like, you have to go. I'm like, I want to be a part of the whole experience. I want to go dress shopping. I want to see you get all dolled up and beautiful. And, and I want her to have that experience. Will she have a promposal? I, probably not. And that's really unfortunate because she's the coolest. I'm very biased, but yeah, she probably won't. Here's my thought on the proposal. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts. How many of these are tr the true risk? How many of these proposals are like slam dunks where it's like a boyfriend, girlfriend, and it's just some big gesture? Right. I think. Or it's an automatic. They know they're saying yes. I think 95% are. That's what I think too. Mm -hmm. I want to know who's the guy that's laying it on the line. That's doing the like the Riccardi move. Yeah, the Riccardi. But instead yeah. of a note, he's going to Riccardi's front lawn, boom box, rose petals, got his buddies with him. They all painted a different letter of will you go to prom with me on their chests. Has them like truly rolling the dice. Yeah. yeah. Hires Bigfoot, the monster truck, to like drive him to the. <laughs> he's in a tuxedo with tails. Yes. Baby powder blue. He's going, he's going all in. On a girl he barely knows.
I want to hear that story because and because there has to be at least one where it just did not go well. Oh man, you, you know what all I mean? That yeah. money, got the billboard. That probably would have been me. When you when you are rejected, oh, dude, it is a confidence killer. Oh, so I went through life though too. You're oh yeah, rejected. I made me stronger. I went through a friend one time, like a girlfriend that I grew up with, Casey, who I love, and she. I wanted to ask. Way out, so far out of my league, dude. She was like five years, I think she, I might have been in the eighth grade or something, and she was like a senior in high school. But I just was like, hey, you never know if you don't ask. Right. Right. And I just wonder how she went, she's like, oh, I'll ask her for you. <laughs> and then she came back to me with, and I was like, man, I wonder how brutal the actual, she, I, she definitely sugarcoated it for me. I know, she, you know, she mm. she had to have. That's sweet of her, then. Yeah. That was really yeah. her. Yeah, of course. But I'm just like, imagine how brutal that would have been if that would have been a one-to-one -one exchange. Yeah. I was like, way out of my, like, she was super popular, super hot. Was like the girl everybody wanted in high school. Hey, and I think I was in, like, eighth grade. And I was like, you. I'm shooting my shot, Shoot dude. Shot, I'm going to be in high school next year. I think she might have been a junior, and I was in like eighth. I wasn't even in high school yet, and I was like, "Why not? I can come into high school king if I play this right." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, it didn't work Did out. Ever, yeah, it was insane. I get the Did vibe you, of the kids today that they're just not even interested in each other, and in, in in that grand gesture or dating. Yeah, the view I get is high school students are just kind of rolling solo and not giving a crap about any of this. She has yeah. a cool avatar. Yeah, that's about it. That's as much as they go into it. Cool avatar. Will you go to Meta Prom with me? <laughs> yes. They're like they got their VR <laughs> goggles, yeah. VR goggles yeah. on. I'm into it. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Did you ever have that happen in school though? In middle school, it's happened to me where uh, the girl I liked, she was a cheerleader, she was you know beautiful, all that kind of stuff. And we got really close. We started hanging out all the yeah. time. Started talking on the phone, and I'm like, okay, I got to ask her out. And about the time I was about to ask her out. I was walking the hallway one day, and like all like a group of the football guys just like shoved me against the locker. Yeah. And like, do not ask what? her out. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, and I'm like, ah. oh. I was like, I wasn't going to. How do you spell oh, Ricardi? I went wussy. Oh, Scott, I, I hate that. A wuss. I think it's two C's. R I C C. Yeah. A R D I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was yeah, her first name? Let's see how she looks. Oh, do a little Facebook stalking. Cool. <laughs> I just want to. See. Jennifer. Jennifer. Yeah. I'm sure we have some government folks listening. They could probably type in a computer to find everything you need. <laughs> the Rizzuto Show Detective Agency. On so it, Jen on the Riccardi case that lives in St. Louis. What? <laughs> what? She has fallen what? here. Dun, dun. Can you imagine? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> All right, listen, we got to take a break. But first. All right, Teamers, remember that is brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. Proud sponsor of... Team Riz and your home for Blues Hockey. From St. Clair, Missouri, Joe Nestor is our team. Yes, Joe. Uh, Joe has been a religious listener of the show since the very beginning. Has preached the gospel of Riz to everyone around him since. Has loved the additions of uh, Rafe and Learn over the last year and all the funny stories that are shared between the crew every morning. Joe appreciates how the gang helps St. Louis get their mornings off to a great start with laughs, fun games, and great conversation. Well, there you go. From St. Clair, Joe Nestor is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. And uh, we had a secret Team Riz meetup on Friday at the Hot Shots at Fenton. It was a two-hour gathering. Nice. It was uh, great to see everybody out there. Had some laughs. Drank a beer or two. Is that her? I'm asking you. I don't know. I have what no cute idea. lady. Yeah, I'm nice. going to be honest. I've clicked on four uh, Jennifer Riccardi's, <laughs> is, and they're all smoking hot. It's, there's something in that rest. name, dude. Dang. This is, th this is 30 years ago. I, I so she lives look. in New York. I haven't lived in New York in, in 21 years. She's doing great. She's, She's great. She, she didn't tattoos. need you. Great. <laughs> <It's radio. laughs> okay. great. This is 1992 that happened. She's still got it. Great. Yeah. Uh, okay, where are we? <laughs> oh, going to commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Am I like, am I red? Yeah. yeah. You got that Riccardi heat, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Riccardi and Coke. 
Uh, we got uh, Crab on Celebrities after the break at 7.06. It is Monday, your first look at the traffic and weather. Learn coming at you. And your traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is on Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets at www.raceway.com. Eastbound 44, just before Highway 109, the left lane is blocked. Then another accident in the right lane, right before that 109 exit, okay? Uh, over on the Illinois side, westbound 64, past Route 3 on the Poplar Street Bridge, there's an accident on the right lane. Traffic is jamming through the 70 split. Your point weather today, we're going to get up to 69 low the sun, Lord, yeah. for tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's currently 35 degrees, and your point weather brought to you by Martin Jetco Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, welcome back to the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Phone number 314 624 3833, the Mick Ultra Studio Cams. 1057thepoint.com slash Riz the socials at R I Z Z show your emails. Riz show at 1057thepoint.com. Send us instant feedback through the 1057 the point mobile app. Will somebody tell me when the Super Bowl was? February eleventh. February eleventh. Today's the last day then. Oh, thank God. Today's the Today's last the last day. day of the Riz Ooh, Show presented by the Fast okay. Lane. Yeah. That's it. Tomorrow. And you got an extra one in there. Thank you for your service to fulfilling that duty. Mm -hmm. That's it. Did it. Did it. That flew by. All right. Sex time fun facts coming up. Sex toy of the week. And I think today's a sex toy of the week. Timely and topical. Yes. Very topical. What topical. is it, like a ballot box? You stuff your junk in? No. Oh. oh. You're close. Really? I mean, around, around election day, maybe. It's going to be something you've... And we said election day. I guarantee it's one you've played with. Really? Mm hmm I'm intrigued. Okay. <laughs> Recently. <laughs> All right. By the way. I'm not going to look at it until it's time. Don't. And then I will confirm or deny. Uh, the wife and I had some, uh, some, some friends over yesterday for dinner. Sunday, Italian Sunday dinner. Wow. At the Riz household. What a treat. What a treat. Uh, and, and my buddy is a, uh, he, he's a foodie. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a foodie. He's definitely a foodie. Loves to, you know, loves the finer things. Oh. Goes to the nice restaurants. Great friend. So I want, listen, coming over for Sunday dinner, I want to impress. Mm-hmm. Bit of a foodie. I want to impress, so I got up early Sunday morning. Yes. I was going to make a bolognese. Ah. Right? I got the official recipe. What is a bolognese? It's like a meat sauce. Okay. I got the official recipe from, uh, like, the city of Bologna, Chamber of Commerce. Like, I really did it up. Regu. Regu. Like, you want, you want authentic Italian? Like, you're going to get it on Sunday at the Riz House. Again, the, the Bologna, city of Bologna... Chamber of Chamber of Commerce recipe, the official handmade pastas. I didn't do that. I could have. Oh. That was oh. a, that would have been a whole thing. Come on. That, that's really didn't go all out then. I mean, I went. I went about ninety five percent. Okay. Hey, not bad. Went about ninety five percent. Simmered this sauce for hours. Ooh. They come over. Come to find out, he's on. Uh, the, uh, the, the we go Oh, fail. <laughs> Foodie fail. <laughs> He's not really eating like he once did. <laughs> uh, he ate one noodle. One noodle. That was it. I go, Gosh, all right. Gosh, darn. Did everybody what else eat think, it, though? though? Yeah, I'm sitting on all this ragu, guys. <clears throat> uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, was the anybody impressed? Nah. Dang it. Did you bring your leftovers? <laughs> That's yeah. the same reaction you got for prom. Yeah. yeah. Nah. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. Well, good on you for going to Bologna and trying to do something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. All the way there to get yeah, that recipe. All the way there to get yeah, the recipe. Dude. Wow. And they have it just on the Chamber of Commerce website. I mean, is you that gotta, what they do in Italy? Could... Well, there's like certified recipes. You know, they take their Italian food. They're serious. I didn't know that. That's cool. I appreciate oh, yeah. <laughs> I wish our city commerce places would just start doing that. You know, like what is the what is the recipe of Baldwin or Ellisville? Like what's the official Chamber of Commerce recipe for toasted ravioli? Like that that could yeah. be a thing. Let's get it going. I'm St. pretty Louis. sure Overland has the hot dog. Yeah. Like that, that could be a thing. Prepare it correctly. You go into the Tower Grove website. It just tells you how to properly melt the precious metals in a catalytic converter to get yeah. the most money out of them, <laughs> which is nice. Anybody go to Oyster Fest? We had Oyster Fest in the studio, so no, I did not. 
I wish I could have. I had too much to do this weekend, man. I, was I wanted to go. We were running around all weekend. Pamela hey. Anderson. I was Pamela Anderson on Saturday yeah, night. You had a wild weekend. North Glendale Trivia Night. I was getting side-eyed by a bunch of Glendale elites on Saturday. <laughs> Tight. So you went as Pam and Tommy? Yeah. Tim shaved his face down. He did the uh, Tommy Lee soul patch. Soul patch. Nice. Can I see a picture? Of course you can. Dude, pull those up. It, they looked good. Did and you the, post these? The couple they went with looked good. Did some stories on Instagram. They um, were uh, I mean, Kurt is... Cobain and Courtney. Oh, dude, Tim looks great. He does. Yeah, Tim, I'll share on oh, our show. Yeah. So Tim looks great. Yeah. And there you are. And I look like a normal, <laughs> how I normally do on Saturdays. Nah, uh, you had like a good. <laughs> I, I, you had the barbed wire tad on. Oh, you had the like, barbed wire tad? Yeah, Did you put some tanner on? Uh, yeah, I had oh, some tanner. Yeah, you definitely look tan in it. You Did look Tim like Brian like Bahama. A, Did Tim put an English cucumber in it? Betty Bahama. His, I wanted him to. I said, would you put a massive cucumber in your pants? Yeah, put like an English cucumber down his leg. Or can you just <laughs> stay really get afloat the, the entire night? Yeah. So, um, no, we had a really good time. My best friend, her kids go to that school. And, um, did you say stay afloat? Yeah, I did. Okay. What school? To be PG. Uh, Glendale, North Glendale. I don't know where it is. We were at the Ursuline. Ursuline? Ursuline. Glendale's Academy. very close to Shrewsbury, yeah? Um, it's in between? It's like Webster and Kirkwood area. Okay. It's Glendale. Was it a Ooh. costume contest? It was. And we we were not the best dressed. They It was MTV themed. So everybody came as different eras of MTV. And so obviously Tim and I were uh, Tommy and Pam. And uh, we had Kurt and Courtney at our table. We had, um, you know, Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears, the jean suits that they had on, you know, for one of the VMAs. And a, there was a table of moon men of the award, the VMAs. <laughs> and they yeah. were so excellent. It was fun. That's we cool idea. we did a trivia contest last year, and it was uh, it was John Burroughs. It was for a charity, and it was '80s themed. Nice. So it was '80s music themed, and our table looked awesome. Like my buddy dressed like Prince. Ah. Uh. Like I've oh, the, the wife and I had like uh, like ripped jeans and like real like real '80s. I love that. Real '80s. Like we really went all out, and a table full of people in pastel tracksuits won. <sighs> Come on. There was the track. No effort. The track suits were at this no one, effort. too. No effort. And they all looked. There was there was a whole table of Janet Jackson's. Pastel you know, track Miss Jackson, suits. if you're nasty, era, which was Nip cool. slips? No. Uh, <laughs> this, was the, this was the all black outfit with the cool hat, with the black hat that had like the silver. I don't remember what her album was, but yeah. it was great. You guys look cool. Thank you. Yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. Did you win? You were. Nah. When, we, when I checked in, you were like one behind. We only had one. There were so many people tied for first, and we were we had just missed one question by the ninth round. It was great. Jeez. We were killing it. And then I started slamming yeah, the red wine that. down. Got smarter and that smarter. That was the end. And that was the end for that was me. The end of our trivia night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why were you getting the side eye? Because you guys were too. Because my tatas were out. Yeah. I had to push oh, up. Oh, you were showing Cleve. I, well, and oh. I had to, you know, I had to really get in there. And so I I didn't want to take my jacket off. And then um, my best friend's like, you have to take your jacket. You are not looking very Pamela right now. And so I did. Yeah, Pamela and then, Anderson doesn't wear a jacket. And then people were, you know, I got a lot of people were like, whose kids, who's that? Whose mom is that? I got a lot of that. ESP flying in my head. Yeah. People wondering, like, what kind of ho mom is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I dads know were wondering for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Whoa, didn't see her in the pickup line. I mean, we looked so out of place. Like, Tim and I went over the top, kind of sexualized, because Tim had just like a white tank top on, you know, and looked trashy as hell, but he was wearing my furred coat, and he had this crazy. <laughs> And Crazy tonight's wig. costume contest winner is Tommy Lee and Home Mom. All right. Home Mom. Home Mom. Congratulations. Home Mom. Home Mom. Home Mom. Home Mom. Yeah, it was fun. That's well, what he nice. says. You guys went song. all out. I, I, do, uh, I do enjoy when people. I, I do like the theme nights. Me too. Yeah. And when people kind of take it seriously. And you guys really got out. You went to Jenny Lewis last night. I know. I've had a busy weekend, guys. Did you go to dinner too? No, oh yes, yesterday. Blueberry Hill. We went to Blueberry Hill yesterday, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. I know I'm a simp for Blueberry Hill on this show, mm. but it just has it all. It's Everybody best, gets something man. that they want. Burger, Reasonable swine. price. It, it, I had Darts. a soup and salad. Tim had a burger. You know, you're definitely not going there for a quiet meal. No, you're in the dart room. It was great. But if you go on a certain some weeknights, you just go in there. You might, you know, there's not too many folks, yeah. and it's great. It's just perfect. I love Blueberry. It's a good Hill. hang every time. Great beer selection. What else do you want? Cool vibe. You never hear the same song. 
Every time you go, you hear a different song. Yeah. I heard the end of a conversation in Blueberry Hill one time that haunts me to this day. I got to know. I got to know. I was hanging out, and these people were making out. The end of the bar. Yeah. Oh, my. I mean, it Love. was. They were getting after it. And they pulled away from kissing, and they said something that was muffled. And then the lady goes, my vagina, my house. Okay. <laughs> And I was like, I got to know how that ended, whatever they were talking about. Like, what I want, if you're out there and you're listening, lady, <laughs> Please. what was the lead up to that? Because then they, they literally walked out. I will tell you what the what the response yeah. was. He said, the rent is due. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. If, I was like, is this a couple, is this a divorcing couple negotiating? I my vagina, my house? That was direction. Is this a... Uh, where are we going after yeah, yeah. this? It's my vagina, my house. There's a lot of ways. My vagina, my house. Or was she saying, that. like, okay, okay. my vagina is my house? Well, yes. That, too. There's so much I want to know. No, I'm, I'm thinking it's... My place. My, you know, my vagina at my place. Mm-hmm. Not here at good the bar. Just put it in ways. The way she said it, though, the tone, I can't express to you. Were they dressed classy? How are these people dressed? I don't like Pam and and Tommy. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Name? I think it was Ho Mom. Was I did. Ho I did think Ho Mom. It was Tommy Lee and Ho Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Was this this was that you guys? Yeah, that was us. It's been a few years back. Who knows? You do love Blueberry Hill. Yeah, you I do. do. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I you didn't Tim, know her back then. Tim unlocked something, guys. I'm here to say the Soul Patch, which I have not found attractive since Crazy Town. You know, Tumba Shifty Lady, Shell Shock. Shifty we, Shell Shock. Yeah. He shaved that thing up, and I something came back. Big, oh, big no. wave Your came back. Your loins were on fire. Oh, 2003, Lauren was red hot. Huh. Did he keep it? <laughs> no, he shaved it up. Oh. Yesterday. He, he did? Like, yeah, he was like, I'm not keeping this. Yeah, he, he kept it that night, though. Yeah, he kept it that night. <laughs> that was the best night of his life, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Got to bang. Wife uh, dress up like home mom, <laughs> Pam Anderson. I got a soul patch. I'm, I'm going down with a soul yeah. patch right now. My like vagina, life is my good. House. That's right. New job. Dude, he has to be just, he's <laughs> on cloud nine right now. Oh. All right. Let's calm down, everybody. Sorry. How was the concert? Jenny Lewis was excellent. She's always good. Cool as hell. Couldn't tell you. A song. She's she great. was in Rilo Kylie, Postal Service. She, Jenny and Johnny. She's got a great solo career. She's excellent. Have she's a good time? Good. Yeah. Well, there you go. You stay for the whole show? No, we left about like 10 o'clock. Left about that. Ah. So. All right, it's time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best, flush the rest, brighthouseco.com, 636 Uh we are ACDC fans on this show. We sure are. And we are Bon Scott ACDC fans. We're both. We're both. I'm not trying to poo on Brian Johnson, but Bon Scott was cool as hell. And Lee Tiger Halley, who starred in the Australian Netflix series Boy Swallows World, has just been cast to play Bon Scott in the film The Kid from Harvest Road. Now, the producers are describing this as a fictionalized narrative set in the 1960s, capturing the essence of of his early life in Western Australia. Filming's beginning next year, and um, it's going to tell the whole Does story. Does he look like... Uh, bon Scott had a particular look He to did. Him. He had kind of what's, sharp features. What's his name? Features. I'm look this up. Lee Tiger Halley. Lee there Tiger Halley. So they're going to cover the entire part of Bon Scott's life, ah, even leading up to kid. him, you know, dying at the age of 33. Um, he drank himself to death in 1980. But this is cool. I'm, I'm excited to see what this guy can do to tell the story of Bon Scott's How life. How old is he? Hmm. He looks young. young. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is David Lee Roth show, but we do have to talk about Sammy Hagar because this is a Sammy Thank Hagar you. town. Um, he's posted a video on Instagram in which he talks about his belief in aliens. He says, prediction. In the next few years, we will all be hearing more and more about this stuff and how long it's been going on. Buckle up, folks. We're going for a ride. Okay, so that's Sammy Agar? Yeah. He has had contact, he said. Yes, he's written books about it, or in some of his different books over time, he, he mentions it. Um, and I think we need to believe him, and yeah. we need to buckle up big time. Madonna stopped her show to address a few audience members. Um, best. This is the best. Who were sitting down. <laughs> she uh, She's on her celebration tour. She was in L.A. on Thursday. And uh, here's a little audio of uh, what that sounded like. So stand up. You're on a Madonna show. 
hey, this is a dancing show. You better you better be on your feet. Right. Well, they're doing sitting down over there. Um, why are you doing sitting down? Sorry about that. I'm glad you're here. And tell us why, Larm. Well, as Madonna later discovered as she was calling these people out, they were sitting down because they are people with disabilities. They were in wheelchairs. Yep, nice. <laughs> so social media had thoughts. Um, some people said politically incorrect. No girl, that was just me. And one wrote one fan. Ma'am, there are 100 reasons why someone might sit and all of them are valid, chimed in another. And another person said she did not apologize enough. She said, oh, politically incorrect. She was trying to walk it back. Um, oh, come on. I mean, it happens. Yeah. It happens, but. Oh. I love it whenever Hilarious. It's Guarantee that people didn't care. Hope, no, hope. The only, it's everyone getting offended on yeah. everyone else's behalf. This I is guarantee that people though. are like, are people really offended? Well, they're protective, I, and I, I think that's nice that people are protective. I get that. Protective you know? of yeah. what? Protective of those people's feelings. I mean, my God, like, I and hope they did have a good attitude. We don't, we won't know, right? Unless they come forward. Oh, come but, on with the pearl clutching. Yeah, it can they really that? If, okay, so this happened. She didn't say time. like, "Hey, you losers." Right. Yeah. She just said, "Why?" You know, she was. It's a concert. Everyone's on their feet. Okay, she team. was just trying to hype it up, and I thought that she, like, you know, whatever. True like, story, hand of God. Wasn't that big At of a the deal. Team Riz meetup on Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, a blind man was there. And as everybody was kind of getting the wristbands and taking stickers, you right. know, I, I know, hey, good to see you. I said, good to see you to a blind man. Oh, yep. yeah. And he said, well, I can't see you. Oh, had a good attitude. And about we it. laughed about it. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. And we laughed. Yeah. I did an improv show one time where someone registered a complaint. Because we did a uh, opening to an improv show where we were, there was a, a squirrel. One of our, I had played a squirrel that had gone snow blind from staring at the snow that uh, ended up like eating a purple carrot off of a snowman's crotch. Now, <laughs> that's how it's absurd and insane this, sure. ins and I had, we had to, our entire team had to like sit down with the manager of the theater and be like, we got a complaint saying that it was ableist because you were playing a blind, snow blind squirrel, temporarily blind squirrel, I might add. It was snow blindness. It wasn't even, and I was like, we've jumped the shark on some of this stuff. I'm like getting, yeah. I mean, it was fine. We took the complaint, we handled it, but it was like, uh, sometimes I think people just are looking for a reason to like go off. This same thing happened in 2008 with uh, Joe Biden, actually. And an article I read, That's Biden one, had an yes. awkward moment during a rally in Columbia, Missouri. At the start of his remarks, he pointed out several state lawmakers in the audience for praise when he got to Chuck Graham, a state senator from Green Meadows. Biden urged the lawmaker to stand up. Chuck, let him see you. Mm. He's in a wheelchair. Mm. I can't stand up. <laughs> you guys, isn't he a vet or something? But what if he did, though? Ooh. That'd be freaky. Then it's well, did you watch SNL, anybody, this weekend with Josh Brolin hosting? Because there yeah, was, we watched a little bit of it. There was a part where they were doing a spoof on Mari Povich show, and... This woman is wanting to, you know, talk about how her husband's been cheating on her. And everybody's, like, all up in his ass, like, yeah, let's get him out here. And then he, he comes out, and he's a person in a wheelchair, and he's he's paralyzed from, like, the neck down. <laughs> and slowly but surely, all the audience members start, like, trickling out. Like, they're like, I can't handle this. They have to, like, get out. Mm. It was, I mean, it's worth looking up. It's pretty good for us to know. Um, the upcoming Michael Jackson biopic will not gloss over the child molestation allegations against him. This is something that everybody's been kind of wondering about. Are they going to address it? Yes. They are, but it's going to be pretty biased, uh, allegedly here. A journalist, it's the family. It's the family. A journalist who read an early draft of the script says... Uh, the movie very much wants to convince you that Michael is innocent and goes to great lengths to minimize and downplay the actual claims and eviscerate the accusers. None of this is surprising to those of us on that side of the speculation, though, given that the movie has the blessing of both Michael's estate and his nephew Jafar is yeah. playing him. Speaking of movies, last night was the 96th Oscars. Um, I didn't get to watch it because I was at Jenny Lewis, but here's, here's... I watched a little bit. Was it okay? Jimmy Kimmel's always great. Um, did you well, you think? I didn't really see much of him. Not, okay. I didn't see the opening. Well, here's, I wanted to play this. This is winners in 30 seconds, in case you missed anything. Let's just get through it in 30 seconds. Here's the Oscars. Here Best Supporting Actress, Oscar. Davine. <laughs> Actor in a supporting role. Robert Downey Jr. Best Animated Feature. The Boy and the Heron. Oh, so, so good. Billie Eilish and... <laughs> the actor in a leading role. 
Killian Murphy. Actress in leading role, Emma Stone. Best picture, Oppenheimer. I did hear that the uh, Pacino yeah. announcement yeah. best picture was really weird. Yeah. He didn't read the nominees. Yeah, I got the audio here. I don't know. Uh, did I do some Shakespeare now? I think uh, is in order, right? Uh, to be. No, I'm not going to do it. No, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> well, this is the time uh, for the last award of the evening. And it's uh, uh, my honor to present it. Uh, ten wonderful films uh, were nominated, but only one will take the award for Best Picture. And uh, I have to go to the envelope for that. And I will. Oh. Here it comes. <laughs> And my eyes see Oppenheimer. Yes. That's yes. the way he said it. It was really weird. I, I see Oppenheimer. The way he said the winner, there was no cheer from the crowd at first because because how he announced it. Right. Yeah. And that was like the biggest moment of the Oscars, too. Wow. Yeah, was there was a, like, a, I kind of felt he handled it really well. And, oh, man, as a comedian, I don't ever want to critique another comic, but, like, Making fun of, he made fun of Robert Downey Jr.'s sobriety mm. and kind of went, and I thought he handled it really well. Like they were panning to him in the eye. I'm like, this is his big night. The dude's been sober like 21 years. And he's like, this is the high point of Robert's career. Well, not the highest point. And then Robert Downey Jr. just like touched his nose. Like, <laughs> like two enough, on, move on. Two on the nose, bro. Uh, yeah, and he even, he, he was doing that. He was like, yeah, it looked like it was like, hey, move on, buddy. But he did it in a way that like was cool. Lighthearted. Lighthearted and he wasn't cool. doing it because of his cocaine addiction. Yeah, well, no, that's what no. Jimmy made the joke. He's ah. like, "Is that a are the jokes too on the nose, or are you saying you need some cocaine?" But I just like because that is like people's favorite thing to do when you're sober is to remind you of when you weren't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, the dude's got 21 years in. Like, maybe give him a pass. For the he, night, he's probably going to win his first Oscar. You know what I mean? While we were having dinner at Blueberry Hill, they had the Oscars on, so I got to see it. I couldn't really hear what was going on, but it was when Robert Downey Jr. won. Yeah. That dude looks... He's never looked better. Looks great. Than he That's is his first right Oscar, now. right? Yeah, I believe so. I That's think awesome. so. Well, I, I think he won for Chaplin. I'm pretty sure he won for Chaplin. Ooh, man, I'd look that up. I'd I might be wrong. I might be wrong. We have a list of all of the Oscar winners on our blog, so if you want to check that out, I'm sure you see it in your social media already. Um, but something else you see is Ryan Gosling. He brought the Kennergy to the Oscars. He performed alongside Slash and Wolfgang Van Halen. Oh, I saw, I saw that. I didn't watch it. Was uh, it great? I mean, it was it was good. I don't I don't really know the song, but, but he, I knew Wolfgang Van Halen played in it. He was on stage. They never showed him. Really? They showed Aww. his face at the end, leaning up against Slash. That was it. They didn't know who he was. It was as if Slash was the only like star on the stage. Yeah. Mm. Which, yeah, Slash is obviously the bigger star. That's uh, unfortunate. But Wolfie didn't get his, uh, didn't really get his moment. And as your best, for your future best as friend, my future best you're friend, tender I, for him. I felt bad. Uh, so I guess Pacino forgot to read the nominee. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's like a million years old. I think he's pictures. all right. Like, I guess he was supposed to read the nominees. He never did. Mm. Ten, <laughs> ten talkies. <laughs> yeah, ten talkies. <laughs> I find it really interesting, the gifts that actors and directors who are nominated, what they receive, they get these gift oh, the bags. Oh, gift bags, yeah. Um, and they stopped doing this for a little while because I guess there was some tax <laughs> yeah, questions. Yeah, fine, yeah. But the, they brought them back. These gifts were priced at $178,000, okay? And so... This year's bag was called Everyone Wins Bag, includes $50,000 stay at a luxury chalet in Switzerland. There was also a three-night stay at a private villa in St. Bart's. A seven-day holistic wellness retreat was in this thing. Uh, they had personal blenders, chocolates, pillows, books, shoes, backpacks, underwear, a grill, kitchen appliances, and cookware were all part of this massive gift that was given to everybody who was nominated. I mean, how cool is that? Those things are amazing. Yeah. Those gift um, bags. Do you think the Oscar ratings will be up or down? Down. Up. I think down. Because the Globes were up, so I think this will be up. You think so? I saw only, I saw Oppenheimer. I mean, that's I'm the out. only... Is this the first one since the slap? Did the slap happen last year? Uh, the year before. Okay. Right? I don't know. Oh, man. 
I don't know. Time I don't is either. irrelevant these days. I'm saying, oh man, for myself. I think it's two years yeah, because two years. I, Chris two Rock years. waited a year and put his special yeah. out, and then I thought it was pretty anti. I mm. didn't think it was the greatest. He had a year to come up with something. Uh, it was pretty and remarkable. Brian Gosling was definitely the highlight of the night. I watched the back half, and I thought it was just pretty like. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of an unremarkable night. I like, saw Christopher Nolan accept his award for Best Director. I went, that was his first, right? Uh, eh, I did uh, like the whatever. way they did Best Actor and Best Actress. They had former winners each say a thing. Like, they had Nicolas Cage. Oh, that was cool. The Best Actor That was, thing. Cool. That was cool. That, I hope they keep doing that, because that was actually cool to bring out, like, past winners and have each person address, like, a nominee. That's uh, nice. The, the, uh, the In Memoriam is getting some heat. Yeah, they oh, omitted boy. Angus Cloud, and who else was omitted from it? Uh, disgraceful, in memoriam, obscures faces and names of dead. Like, they didn't even show the faces, really. They showed them from a distance on the screen at hmm. the theater. Mm. Wow. Uh, this is from uh, Showbiz 411, Roger Friedman, who's a pretty big columnist. Uh, tonight's presentation was disgraceful, disrespect to the names and faces of the dead, obscuring them in the background of a lot of uh, Michigas, the choice of Andrea Bocelli. And his son only made it worse. Hmm. They have nothing to do with music. I'm sorry, they have nothing to do with movies. They are the greatest over-singers of all time. Wow. So it was Bocelli and his son. What were the producers thinking? Yeah. That sucks. Should we get rid of the In Memoriam? No. No, I look forward to it. I mean... But they, they always they screw the it up show. every time. <laughs> the death, really that's funny. your that's favorite, favorite part of the award show. I feel like honestly. they screw that and best picture up every year. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Let's like, get rid of the Oscars altogether. It's yeah, done. I, I don't really care. I maybe was, we stop having octogenarians come out. And maybe give, that. Like, let's just have someone cognizant come out and give best picture. I'll be honest with you. I, I usually never see any of the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and last night it was like, oh, I was laying in bed. I go, oh, th I was. This is on. Okay, right. let me, I'm going to park here for a little bit. That was it. It wasn't much wa a must-watch TV for me. but well, Yeah, we tried to find it, but you have to pay to... Have ABC? Yeah. So I'm like, ah, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to... You don't have an antenna? Go Hulu Plus for that. What's mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, I don't have an antenna, no. Guys, also, we need to just highlight some of the Golden Raspberry Awards as well, because these were the worst performances of the year. Congratulations to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Um, one for Worst Picture, Worst Director, Worst <laughs> Screenplay. And also congrats to Megan Fox. She uh, she won Worst Actress for Johnny and Clyde and Worst Supporting Actress with The Expendables 4. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Yesterday was, awesome. was uh, National Mario Day, and perfect time for Nintendo and Illumination to announce a new Super Mario Brothers movie. The film is going to be based on the world of Super Mario Brothers, scheduled to be released April 3rd of 2026. Mm. Uh, the original Super Mario Brothers movie was released in April of 2023. Um, Natalie Portman is getting divorced, or is divorced. She and Benjamin Millipede divorced after 11 years of marriage. The Oscar-winning actress filed for divorce from her director, choreographer, husband of 11 years just last July, and it was finalized in France last month. Um, we were talking about this on Friday, yeah, and everybody in this room... was stepping out on her, huh? Well, who divorced... I mean, I guess she divorced him, but, like, mm. how do you cheat who on Natalie... Who cheats on Natalie Portman? Who cheats on Natalie Portman? What's wrong with you? Wow. She's a genius. She's an incredible actress. Good looking. Activist. Good looking. She owns the soccer team. What else? What's do you wrong want? with you? The soccer team. <laughs> what soccer team? There's a female soccer team that she owns. I don't know about oh. it. The tax write-off. Yeah. Hey, Richard Simmons. We miss him dearly, and he hasn't been out of his house in many years. He recorded a bunch of songs, but never released them. Well, um, the New York Post said the time is now, and so. He's going to start posting them on YouTube, allegedly. And the first one arrived. It's called Aerobic. And I've not listened to this yet, so we're going in cold. Has anybody heard this no. yet? No. You saw me the link. So this is Richard Simmons. The, yeah. Richard, the Richard Simmons. The, he is yeah, on vocals. Kiss. He is delivering the beats. And there's a little um, a spoken word energy here. So Okay. Prepare. This is the new Richard Simmons. World premiere. Okay. I think I got your number. All right, all right. Oh, that kills me. All right. Dang it. <laughs> Seriously, this is it. Love it already. Richard Simmons coming at you. I was 
listening to where I made a bolognese. What if this is filthy as hell when it picks up and we're not ready for it? He also sounds like he could sing Monster Mash quite well. You're Damn. absolutely right. Not like Boris. Um, that was pretty good. Yeah, I like to it. To be honest. I'm in. Again, aerobic, and it will be on the blog for your listening pleasure. Um, Enjoy, and, guys. And that is your crap on celebrities. Yeah, All right, today's uh, celebrity birthday is Thora Birch. You know who that is? Thora oh, Birch? Yeah. She's, uh, she was in Now and Then. She was in uh, American Beauty. Yeah, Kevin Spacey's daughter in American Beauty. She was in Ghost World. She was in Hocus Pocus. Oh, yeah, Thor she's a little Birch. girl. Yeah, Thor Birch is 42 today. Benji and Joel Madden from Good Charlotte, they are 45 today. Johnny Knoxville is 53. Terrence Howard from Empire, from Hustle and Flow, from Ray, from Crash. Terrence Howard is 55. Lisa Loeb is 56. You say. That's right. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Iovine, producer, music executive, entrepreneur, founded Interscope Records and co-founded Beats. With Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iovine is 72. Bobby McFerrin, don't worry, be happy. He is 74 today. Uh, ABC News legend Sam Donaldson is 90. And Rupert Murdoch is 93 years old today. Recently newly engaged. Yeah, Fifth wife years old. or yeah. something. All right, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is the legend Nina Hartley. And today's birthday girl has been in 1,478 oh. Bond films. Woo-wee! Dude, to go through her soldier list of credits. My God, took me four hours <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> she was in The Adventures of the Fart Bitches, Alice in Analand, oh. Ass of the Past, in a movie called Beaver Ridge, Bomb Ass White Booty 2, Buns and Roses, Chamber of Horrors 2, Porn World, <laughs> not Falcon Crest, but Falcon Breast, mm. Hump Up the Valium, Mommy, you and me make three. Seymour Butts rides again. Your granny's a whore, too. Mm. And who can forget a role? In 2010's No Use Crying Over Spilled Milfs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nina Hartley is 65 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays. And that was your crap on celebrities. All right. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. We'll take a break. We'll come back with... You are Sexy Time Fun Facts. And we'll lead off with an email. Headline, my girlfriend's dirty talk is ruining our relationship. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you write this, Rafe? <laughs> no. <I'll... laughs> Not me. Send her my way. All right, 750 Monday, traffic and weather, learn coming at you. And it's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets. Find yours at WWTRaceway.com. Eastbound 70 just before 270. We have an accident in the left lane. Also, eastbound 70 just east of 141. This could be the same area, uh, but I'm putting it out there to you anyway. The left lane is blocked. Um, your weather today, we will get up to a high of 69. All right. A low of 34. Sunshine galore today right now. It's 36 out there at 750. Let's go. Right, welcome back to the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. This will be the last day for that. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just some quick uh, shower thoughts before we get into sex, some fun facts. Just some things to ponder. All right. Things to think about. Some poor schmuck with, with a time coffee machine woke up to cold coffee today. Yep. Thanks, daylight savings time. Uh, this, uh, you know, spring the clocks forward one hour thing would be so much more popular if it was done at 4 p.m. on Friday. They should do that. I know. I've a lot of people complaining in that way online. Yeah. Saying just why? Why does it have to be 2 a.m.? However, working at a bar when it's daylight saving time is awesome because you get off that hour early. Yeah. So. 
But I think for the for mass population, you know, 4 p.m. on a Friday would be great. Right. Yeah, they should do it halfway during the work day, so you have to leave a little early, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people working in watch stores must hate their job the day after daylight saving time begins and ends. Okay. You know you've won the procrastinator of the year when you didn't have to move the clock ahead over the weekend because you never bothered to move it back last <laughs> fall. Congratulations, guys. I did have a little moment of gratitude for my TLX because it just updated itself. And my Apple Watch, the technology is wow. incredible. You TLX guys. Flex. Oh, TLX Flex, huh? TLX Flex. It was pretty cool, Boom. you guys. Well, I have a moment of appreciation for my stove that I never changed. Oh, oh being right this morning. Yeah. Good deal. No, I got up yesterday morning. I, I changed the stove clock. I changed the microwave clock. I changed the toaster oven clock. All good. Yeah, I was out of town, so I forgot. And last night, I was farting around thinking I had so much extra time. Yeah. And then I realized that the oven was lying to me. It hurt. The change did hurt this year a little. I was in a diner in Denver with another comic who had a 6 a.m. flight. And he forgot. Oh, <laughs> and we didn't just, I mean, we, it, dude, there was a, a wonderful diner in Denver. I, I wish we had. Uh, I, St. Louis really, COVID really killed late night dining here, and it bumps me out. I hope we get a new late night diner. But we were sitting there, and it was like 1 o'clock, and he just housed. He's like, at least I can get like four or five hours of nope. sleep. And then I go, oh, man, it's 3 a.m. right now. That like, sucks. it just changed. Yeah. It was like 1.59. We were getting ready. And I was like, man, that's a bummer. That hurt him more than it hurt me. I had a later uh, flight, but yeah. Oh, okay, off the uh, off the daylight saving thing. The most unsettling thing in the world would be knowing the day and month of your death, but not the year. Yeah, because every year you would be like, oh, <laughs> is this it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very unsettling. Very unsettling. I don't like that. Yeah. Be worse if you just knew the month. Right, because then you're worried all month. Then March sucks. At least if it's like March twelfth. For one day, you're puckered up, but then you're like, two made it. Just so imagine if, like, 31 days out of every year, you're just like, yeah. Is this the. No, because then there's also the lead up to the month. You're probably all yeah. puckered up, you know, the last two weeks of February. Yeah, man. Yeah. That would not be good. Uh, if we allowed people to adopt uh, tigers as pets, we would probably save the tiger population while getting our own population under control at the same time. Just a thought. I would like, you know what? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> just, just, and just a thought. Think I mean, how cool that litter box would be. Oh, it'd be so cute. I, I hate, Tiger King obviously opened up so much of my brain to how abused these amazing animals are. But yeah, I would love it if I could just have a tiger. Yeah. It'd be so cool. Yeah, cute. I want to ride one. Uh, if you draw eyes on a banana... It would legitimately make it easier to talk to. Put eyes on a banana. It you almost want to talk to it. It looks like a phone. <laughs> I talk. Yeah, right. I, uh, mine, yeah, yeah. it'll always be a phone to me, not a person. I get calls on that all the time. Uh, being an adult is letting someone win an argument just in order to save everyone's time. Yep. That's, that's being an adult, guys. That's maturity for sure. When you're stupid, huh? life isn't just hard for you. It's hard for everyone else around you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to accidentally walk in on your parents doing it, it's better to walk in on both your parents doing it rather than just one. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. <laughs> that had, oh, am I right? Imagine. <laughs> am I right? Hmm. I'm going to say that again in case you yeah. missed that one. Let me think about that. If you're going to accidentally walk in on your parents doing it, it's better to walk in on both your parents doing it Rather than just one. Yeah, but you're picturing that they're doing it missionary and under the covers. There's, I think if it was, if it was a little too creative, you'd rather just catch one of them. You don't want to walk in on like reverse cowgirl, like straight up watching your mom do that. Oh. Right? So, I mean, we don't know what your parents are getting into. You don't get to pick your position with that you don't get whole to pick. experience. You don't get to pick when the, when the. Can I get a glass mom? of water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mama? <laughs> get off my mom. We a picture that all you're seeing is your dad's ass pounding away. But what's probably going to happen, <laughs> what's probably going to happen ah. is, you don't know, man. What if it's like your mom looking right at you doggy style? Okay. I, yeah, exactly. Nightmare See, fuel. now. All right.
I'll get your water in about list. 10 Scratch seconds. Scratch that one off the list. I'd much rather... I don't... No. I, well, it's all bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. I'm not saying that. It's lesser uh -huh. two evils conversation. Do we need to go around the horn? And I mean, this is a would you rather. No, we're, we're, oh. we're done with that. No, okay. no. Gonna go. I, think, I think this needs to be ponged a bit. <laughs> I think this needs to be volleyed. What's Make the question? <laughs> question again. Question is, you don't get to pick the position. Single or double? Ah, oh, man. So I'm rolling the dice. You're rolling, rolling the, dice. the dice. You're rolling the dice. And they're in the middle of it. They're in the, they're in the throes of passion. This is the beginning where shirts are still on. Oh, God. This is full on in the deed. Because at least if you only see one, then the other parent, you can kind of just talk yeah. to them for a couple weeks. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but Joe, Joe time is Joe time. Yeah, but... Joe and Jill talk. I think that might be less <laughs> less revealing than the the act of trying to make a kid. So I think I'm going to go with single. Listen, I don't know how you, Joe, but I, my, I'm a whole thing. It's a whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's, a whole whole thing. thing. <laughs> it's the only time you use the swing. Dude, I get inside of a coffin. <laughs> lock it. <laughs> That's how bad I don't want to get caught. I'm like the crypt keeper, dude. I, yeah, I lower myself down into a... And, <laughs> A cellar oh, that wow. I dug out just for Joeing. It puts the lotion on. You have a hatch. Skin. Yeah, there's like a hatch with like. You gotta like turn a submarine. The, wow. Yeah, and then that, that, out. that has a master lock on it. What are you doing? Smart. Uh Singles or doubles? So I'm walking in on doubles or walking in on single. Yep. And you can't pick. I the think doubles. I'm gonna roll the dice on doubles. You're rolling the dice. Wow. Rolling the dice on doubles. Well, roll the dice. Congratulations. Yeah. You're a degenerate. Mom on top. Oh. Oh. Oh, you're right. Oh, we get to find out what yeah, it is. You oh, find wow. out after you choose. Well, now <laughs> I got to go with the, I want to see both. Yeah. Was, I wanna Mom on top. On I won. What do I That's get? fine. What do I get? Mom on top, but in like a catcher. Like oh, no, 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 no. Full squat. <laughs> too late. It's too late. Take that home with you. You made your choice. You made your choice. Full squat. Like a catcher, uh, like calling a sign. Like Yachty she's or Molina. asking like she's asking for no. the curveball. It's okay. Yachty. Scott. Too late. And she looks over her shoulder and makes direct no. eye contact with you. Yeah. I was gonna go see the cover. Now that I would know I could find out what was happening. I, know. You know what? I gotta hear what <laughs> Right. I agree. What creative stuff my parents are doing. You going doubles? Yeah, we They're got standing to. up against the wall like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. <laughs> hey, that's pretty nice. <laughs> standing up and and but your dad is against the wall for some <laughs> <Yeah>. reason. <laughs> And laugh. they're doing it Amazon style. So I look that up. Amazon is, that but, uh, look yeah. that up. Amazon right. styles. <laughs> I don't know if I can explain it on the air. Same day delivery. You're just gonna have to look it up and trust me. <laughs> okay. Let me go to learn. I'm going doubles. G give it to me right You're now. You're going doubles? Oh, yeah. dude, you don't even want to know what Jill's up to. No, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> and it's your stepdad. Look up. It is Jerry. Look up the pile driver. No. Yeah. No pile drive for Jill. <laughs> no pile drive. They're look actually up the you Alabama walk, lawn chair. Oh, I hate to tell yeah. you this, but you, you walked in on Jerry and Jill doing a standing 69. Oh. oh. All right. All right. I, I, you had a choice. I know. You I know. I walked choice. into this cave of my own. Uh. It's wow. Woof. I'm, I'm going singles all day. That's a quick cover up. Damn. That's a quick cover up. That's a quick. Get out. Yeah, you're right. I'm going we singles. I changed, my, I changed my mind. Dead. I changed my mind. No. It's too, it's too late. Never too late. I know people thought that it implied that the, the parent was cheating on the other with a different person. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Lord. that's what I thought at first, too. But then we went on this. No, whole no, other I'm, I'm thinking, no. I'm reading it as if you're going to accidentally walk in on your parents doing it, it's better to walk in on both your parents doing it rather than just one. Yeah. So I'm thinking a solo mission. Sure. Or, or okay, take it how you want. Whatever. It's your fantasy. It's your, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, cool say some fun facts. It's your dream come true. Sponsored by uh, Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet. Okay, so I've been sitting on this email for a while now. Oh, boy. Because this is perfect for sex, some fun facts. Uh, I've been dating this girl for four months, and I love everything about being with her except for how she behaves in the bedroom. I am very attracted to her. I want to be with her and often, but when we are getting intimate, 
she's always saying something to ruin the mood. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's obscenely filthy talk that doesn't quite land. Oh, no. It's not sexy. It's just vulgar or mm. gross. Signed, Tim Elwell. What? Yeah. <laughs> Grow up, sissy. She once said, eat me like a fat kid eats cake. <laughs> I like that one. When okay. she's not vulgar, she's cringe. Oh, no. Once we had the TV on while fooling around, the show that was on was about a team that was digging for gold. When the show goes to commercial, she rolls over and says in her sexiest voice, commence with the drilling operation. <laughs> She sounds fun, man. She sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, she sounds like a good time. I this like guy this sucks. Yeah. It made me cringe, but I powered through it. Oh. oh then the other okay. night, with her legs wrapped around me during missionary, she all of a sudden said, I feel like a frog, and then went ribbit in this really deep, croaky yeah. voice. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, that's a yeah. keeper, man. Yeah, I love her. Maybe. I care about her deeply and don't want to hurt her feelings, but this stuff is hurting our relationship, and I feel like she has a right to know. Dude, Would you say in. something, and if so, how? Lean in to the weird. It's I think sex. you got to lighten up, bro. Yeah. 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 I Sounds want him like to say something girl. so she could leave him and be with somebody who's cool and fun. This guy sucks. I think so, too. Yeah. You're getting laid. She's having fun with it. She's I'm leaning that stuff, way, too. And you're like, <laughs> And if this is what she's saying, imagine, like, what else she's into. Yeah. It's a compliment. Mm -hmm. like, imagine if you leaned in. Yeah, lean in. Show up to that table of weirdness and just dive on yeah, in. Yeah, I think this guy's going to lighten up. Yeah. Or, or coach, like, what do you want to hear? Because it sounds like maybe he wants to hear something else, and that's okay, too, but you need to if be If I heard commence the that. drilling operation, I, hell yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Yes. I'd, exactly. The what? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, platform rig five, we're cleared for takeoff. <laughs> yeah. I'm all I put in. my hard hat on. Yeah. How yeah. much? Oh, this chick is cool. Yeah. This is this is a guy that wants to like I can just tell by the tone of the email. He doesn't it's not that he wants different dirty talk. This guy sucks. He wants this guy is vanilla as vanilla could be. He wants to like bury his face in a pillow over his shoulder and do it missionary, make no eye contact. Sucks. Mm. Get out of here, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I want better for her. Me, Me too. too. Break up. Break yeah. Her, let her, send her off into Break the flames of the world. Yeah, send her, send her <laughs> Is this out of the world. Is a listener email? Yes. <laughs> Lots of people checking in. Can she come talk to my wife? Send her <laughs> out to go find somebody cool. Yeah, sorry, bro. Yeah. Yeah, Matt says this dude doesn't deserve frog girl. Mm-mm. 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 All this stuff that she's saying is making me hot. All right, calm down, Matt. Ribbit. She's awesome. For He's cringing. Pleasure. What a loser. <laughs> yeah. Let her go. Yep. You don't deserve her. Uh, it's hard to believe there could be a new dating trend that, that can happen at home after a year of pandemic quarantine creativity. Uh, but this guy's got a brilliant idea. So his name is Colin. And in a post on Twitter, he said that he and his girlfriend <clears throat> invented this thing during a blizzard in Buffalo last year. It's called Bottle Night. Bottle Night. And it's pretty simple. He said, we lock our phones away, we turn the TV off, we each grab a bottle of wine and talk. That's it. We simply talk and enjoy each other's presence. Mm -hmm. We live together, but it's easy to miss out on quality time. So they put down their phones and get hammered together. That's it. That's it. That's bottle night. Cool. Huh. He didn't invent it. Okay. So the post goes viral. And I'm like, this guy discovered what hanging out is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, this guy just put it like, bottle night is hanging out. Yeah. And somehow got credit for it. I guess give him hey, a, congrats I gotta, like, on that. hats off. But some people are like, oh my God, this is so, pro bottle night. Yeah. How profound. No This phone. is hanging out. Right. Yeah. This is the 90s. And this is if you have a patio outside and you're sitting there talking to your friend. I do this uh, a little bit, though. I, I will make a point to leave my phone in the other room and really focus in on Tim. Like, that's something that I, I've been more conscious of that because I'll be, I'll, I mean, I'm all over my phone. Sure. 24-7. Yeah. yeah. So I understand the making a cognizant approach to spend interpersonal time. Sure. Yeah. That's but something that we all probably need to do better at. It's very thoughtful. But the fact that now putting your phone away and actually focusing on another person is, is a big work. deal. <laughs> yeah. 
is something that's like, wow, dude, I, I never thought of doing that. I know it sucks. Dude. Is this new? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> My girl and I invented this thing, dude. We like hang out and we put on Netflix and then we watch a program together. We call it Netflixing and Chilling. Yeah, yeah man, that ex that's a thing. <laughs> and it's been a no, thing. No, no, we invented it, dude. <laughs> Me and my girl, we're inventors like Einstein and Tesla. Dude, this guy is like really leaning into this. And got credit for it, which I got to. And he's selling swag. He's selling bottle night swag. Wow. Capitalism, Man. just go. I mean, he had an idea. He took it. He ran with it. Okay. Yep. What's his Etsy store? What is it? I don't know. Just like a bottle night. This guy. I'm not giving this guy a dime. Yeah. Is that with a kid? He doesn't or... deserve anything. Mm -mm. I'm buying a sweatshirt. He doesn't deserve a, a damn thing. <laughs> bottle night. It's hanging out. It's so... And if you look under the thread, people are like, oh my God, we're going to try this this Friday. What? I'm just glad it's not a mom, you know? Usually bottle yeah. night is like a, you know, 50-year-old mom is inventing and, and she's um, cricketing a sweatshirt. I'm glad it was a dude this time. That is wild. <laughs> Get the cricket out. I mean, he's probably pressing them himself, you know? <laughs> Going to Joanne Fabric and getting some sweatshirts <laughs> and the stencils. I'm impressed. <laughs> Finally. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, man. Sorry, your mom was checking in in the chat. <laughs> Which mom? <laughs> Mine? Roseanne. Oh, My God. Uh, just giant all caps no with exclamation points from our earlier conversation. I made it. I shouldn't have scrolled back. Switch off, Mom. <laughs> Punch Sorry, out. Roseanne. Yeah. Punch, Punch out, out, Mom. You're a muff. Sorry, Punch mom. out, Mom. That made me laugh really hard. I'm sorry. Um, Bottle night. Some couples are hoping to add a bit of uh, good luck to their marriages uh, this year by choosing the perfect wedding date. Now, you went to, I know you're kind of superstitious, right, Lauren? I'm very stitious, yeah. You're very stitious. Stitious. <laughs> you're mega stitious. I'm mega Not just super, but mega. Mega stitious. Uh, there is an astrologist based in New York City. Uh -huh. And she tells, uh, she's telling people that uh, 2024 is a year of, quote, growth and inspiration. Per its lunar zodiac sign, the wood dragon, which everybody knows. I love the wood dragon. Everybody knows this is the year of the wood dragon. She also says that 2024 is the year of the lovebirds. The wood dragon, known to fight for what it loves, also makes it an excellent time for making commitments. So there are some lucky dates to get married this year. Hit me. And there are some dates that people should avoid. The number eight is particularly lucky in the Chinese zodiac. It symbolizes infinity. Okay. August 8th is a particularly auspicious day for a wedding this year. All right. Most dates during the month, uh, months of March, May, and June are considered lucky days for a wedding. March 1st to the 23rd, March 25th to the 31st, May 1st to the 23rd, and May 25th through June 23rd. All lucky. Nice. Now, here's what you should avoid. Oh, God. Avoid, during those months I just said, the 4th, the 14th, and 24th of those months. Mm. Woo. Four is a number associated with death <gasps> in the lunar calendar. Wonderful. June 21st is the uh, summer solstice, another wonderful time for love. So Heck keep that yeah. in mind, guys. My anniversary is oh. tomorrow. Is it? Yep. How many years? 18. Wow, good for you. Yours is? Yeah. Congrats. Congratulations. Any advice? 18 years. How are we yeah. feeling? Dude, bottle night, man. That's just... Bottle night. Bottle, bottle night. night. What, what gift are you getting? What's the 18th? The wood dragon. The wood dragon. It just <laughs> carves a wood dragon out of a log. I'm going to go outside log. and whittle, whittle right. a wood dragon. There's no... 18th is not a... Is there something associated with there every is. year? There's always what? some kind of year. Yes, there's yeah. always a gift. Should I have looked that up? Yes. Oh, yeah. Did man. you not get her a gift? Have you bought anything yet? Should I have? <laughs> I, what, how is it? It's your marriage. Do you do anniversary gifts? I would at least flowers or something to take her out somewhere. And Oh, man. I was going to go work out with the boy. Yeah, get a... Throw on a turtle Me and the boy, we're going to go to the gym tomorrow. I guess that's tomorrow. a gift. You're getting buff. That's kind of <laughs> nice for her. <laughs> I would say no. I'm going to go, no, that's not a gift. <laughs> I mean, do you have an ad yet? Disagree. Like, what's happening under there? And say that you should stop 
coming when you come home from the gym, you should swing by somewhere probably and give your wife a gift. You go to the gas station, oh, you get one of those I'm chocolate roses. Of course, yeah. I'm gonna do something, you jerks. I know. The Mr. Bolognese. Romance. Now you are. Gonna, Mr. Were you over. though? Now you are. Or now you are. What time is yeah. this? Yeah. I think somebody needs another water pick. Promposal. <laughs> oh. oh, I love Let's this. Let's do it. The promposal that. Will you keep being married to me? Because 18 would be approximate the age you would be to do a promposal. Oh, yeah. All right, I get this together. I can hook That's you up. That's right. I'll hook you up. A marching band come to your house, play a little romance. Yeah, we're definitely not getting the a Beatles. marching band to that house. Um, and it's, you, here's something cool for the 18th. It is porcelain, so you can get her a new toilet or something. New toilet. Porcelain. New bidet. So 18th is the so 18 porcelain. is the porcelain anniversary. Yeah. Mm. Hummel dough. Hummel. Oh, that would be. There's a Hallmark <laughs> store in the valley. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> she don't love it. How mad would she be if you came home with one of those precious? Now, what are we gonna do with this? Right. Why'd you she waste just money? She slams it against the wall. Slam it against my head. Um, if you hate waxing or shaving your bikini line for uh, beach season, yes, just go full Sasquatch, ladies. Put those short and curlies on blast. Let's go, ladies. Because it's a growing no, no. trend, apparently. Uh, the New York Post says not shaving your bikini line is the, is the trendy thing for women to do this year. Well, I grew my pits out a month ago, and I guess I will abide by this. Waxing so. is expensive and painful. Razor burn, not much fun easy, uh, either. So the attitude behind it is enough is enough. We've had it. We're hairy, too. Your pits went unnoticed, right? They did. You think yeah, it would be the same? No, this will be very noticeable. <laughs> yeah, but you you didn't shave your pits for like three weeks. I know, and Tim did not notice. I was even like, wow, look at how big our house is. Like, arms up, pits out. And he, you know, he's like, well, you're... And I finally, I couldn't take it anymore because I was like, I really want to shave my pits before Riz show live. And I have a tank top on. And I said, have you not noticed what's going on down here? But it wasn't that significant. And he goes, you got blonde pit hair. So look at it this. It wasn't that significant. You didn't see it. It can't be that significant it after was. three weeks. It was significant to me. It was a big deal. It looked like I a think dude. it's significant. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> God, she like, you just wanted to notice. Support system of you just wanted it. You wanted just, to notice, and you couldn't. You couldn't keep your mouth also, shut. Also, I don't know how you guys do it because I, my I deodorant was balling up. I felt sticky down there. I didn't like it down there in my pits. Oh, God. I was hoping we're still talking about your pits. <laughs> Deodorant was balling up. I'm like, well, you're that. using it wrong. Okay, that. I had the uh. solid stick. I do solids. I don't do the gel. Mm -hmm. You shave your your pits? Full of aluminum. Me? Yeah. I don't have to. No, I don't have. I'm not a super hairy guy. I got hair under. I got hair in the in the puberty places. Mm. But uh, I don't have to like shave them. I don't get like all. I'm kind of glad because I see dudes with like super hairy pits that have like. Deodorant balls hanging yeah, out. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't trim it. Ugh. I shave mine down. Yeah, mm. mine is it's not gross, terrible. Right? No, it's gross. I meant. Yeah. I shave my arms. Does anybody else know? No. I don't no, know if that's a thing hair. that chicks do, but I do. I shave my arms. I barely even see mine. I don't shave my shoulders though, so I like. No, clean. well, yeah. So the attitude behind the unwaxed bikini line, uh, you know, again, it's enough. It is enough. Having some hair down there shouldn't be seen as a radical act anymore. Should be more normalized, I so agree. says the Post. Yeah, I mean, if you think back to the, the pornography of the 1970s, which, by the way, whenever I used to get on Pornhub back in the day, I was, like, so afraid. I would go find the vintage porn because I'm like, at least these people are old now and I don't have to worry about what? anything. And so everybody Yeah, you were Joe into dead people. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. It's, That's even worse. Well, in my head, it made sense. Again, I haven't ghosts. watched anything in years, but <laughs> yeah. the old ghost Joe, the uh, ghost the vintage <laughs> classics were pretty cool. But everybody was hairy. Well, whatever your opinion is, just heads up. Views of the beach this summer might be a little hairier than normal. Embrace. If that's oh. your thing. Mm. I'm excited for that. That's great. All right, and before we get to the break, <laughs> if you are going on a first date, okay. First dates normally, you know, we'll go out to dinner, whatever, right? Dinner, bar, whatever. But we're, we're doing dinner. Let's say our first date is a dinner date. Okay. There are different types of restaurants you could go to for a first date. Now, I'm going to give you the type of restaurant, and you tell me if it's a good idea for a first date or a bad idea. 
Okay. Okay. A fondue restaurant. Good idea for a first date or bad idea? Mm, bad idea. What if Why? the date's a double dipper and then you're dipping into the fondue? Then you know. Then you get the, you know you're getting a kiss later. But that's super gross. Yeah, but then you can get out. Can you? Yeah. What if you found that out six months in? Good point. I mean, at least then you've made out or been intimate. And maybe it won't yep, be as bad. they're still bad. a double dipper. I know, but I... Yeah, that means they're about, doing that with other people. They're a, double dipping with other people. A double dipping with strangers I don't know. I just don't want to smell like cheese my yeah. first date. Yeah, you're going to blow out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be bad. Diarrhea. It's going to be the whole thing. Yeah, there's... Yeah, too much cheese. Uh, yeah. What if... Or you go for the dessert, like the dessert with the chocolate. Yeah. Right. That's, that's good. That's good. I think a fond, like a fondue three-course meal... Bad idea. You run the risk of the raw meat dipping it into the oil. What if it's not cooked very long? You get food poisoning. You have a blowout. <laughs> then what? <laughs> Riz? I just don't want to smell like cheese. Okay. So oh, I'm thinking late. bad idea. That's your <laughs> essence. <laughs> it's out. My, I'm an you, essence of you cheese. You smell like Parmesan. Yeah. It's mm. like it's all the Balinese you're making at home. I all think. right. Fondue restaurant. Good idea. Bad idea. Come on. I guess honestly, bad idea. Bad idea. Bad. bad idea. Thanks. Good. Good idea. Uh, a wing joint. Bad idea. Bad. Again, you're getting, it, it's the intimacy of how we're eating. And yeah. we have wing sauce all over us. We're lick, you know, he's licking his dirty, I'd be judging immediately. He didn't wash his yeah. hands before he started putting them in his mouth. Right, I think it's a bad idea. Yeah, bad Fondue's idea. like bite-sized and kind of sensual. You know yeah, you what I mean? And it can stick, be fun, right? You got a little stick you and you can see, you can see how person. she's like... <laughs> eats that marshmallow. You can see right. what kind of game. What you can see what that mouth do a little bit. You okay. know. <laughs> but you don't want to be. You don't want them looking like Gollum. You get wings That's... or wings and spaghetti are the worst first date foods. Because you don't want somebody across the table like. Rah, 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 rah. It's disgusting. Yeah, and you got sauce all in your face, mm -hmm. cracking the bones and uh, sucking the middle out. You're just like, I'm oh. good. That's too much. Okay. Yeah, so, no so wing, yeah, wing joints are not a good idea Wings for a first out. date. Okay, uh, what about a sushi restaurant? You're kind of learning how adventurous they are. Are they down? That's kind of a turn on if they're down for the freaky foods. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good That great. goes against what you just said about <laughs> you're eating raw fish now. You were worried about the meat the getting cooked out. at the fondue place. And yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping we're going to a decent sushi yeah. restaurant. We'll blow some sashimi we're going out. To Indo. Mm -hmm. No, my wife and I, that was the very first date we ever went on. It was yeah. sushi? Yeah. Nice. You got the pressure of chopsticks. It mm -hmm. is the pressure. And Well, at sushi restaurants, like, wow, you usually don't play eat like a the lot. Drums. California roll. You usually fine. don't eat a lot. You know, there's good yeah. good conversation. That's that's a conducive to conversation. Kind of high end, too. You, you go hard on the sushi? Yeah. You're adventurous? I am. Yeah. Are you, I don't do the, I, I try everything once. There's things about sushi I don't like. Like, I don't like the octopus sushi. I don't like that. But I do, you know, the tempura, the the raw, you know, all raw dog, some sushi, no mm -hmm. no big. So. Wow. Pretty cool. I think sushi's a good spot. Yeah. Good spot Actually, for really a first date. Now, if you're in Japan, or would you try the octopus there? No. Wow. Once I started learning, and this here's me with my bleeding heart for animals, but once I started learning how smart the octopi are, I just yeah. can't anymore, dude. They are... They are the aliens from other planets. They're here, and we're just eating them up, and it yeah. sucks. It's basically eating raisin brains. Raisin brains. Mm -hmm. Raisin brains. They got eight brains. Uh, what about a food hall? Let's say like a place like the Foundry. It's kind of casual. Yeah, that's an awesome one. Because this, this first date, yeah, that's a fun one. There's a lot of stuff you could... And then also you're guaranteed to get a fun dessert... Local restaurants, you know, artistic entrees, overpriced cocktails. That's the foundry. Yeah. Well, and you can get what you want. So maybe you want tacos, but I want lasagna. And chances are we can both have that. And that's cool. Yeah. And there's nowhere, nowhere like awkward guessing games about where to eat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think, I think the food hall's all right. Yeah. What about a food court? Like at the mall? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of weird in 2024, but maybe we could do some retro dating. I mean... I like, can see that being fun, too, though. Is, is there a movie involved? There's a big difference yeah. between a food hall and a food court. Not really. Yeah, there is. Not in my opinion. I kind of think the food hall's kind of food courty. It's a little higher end. A little higher end. You're still basically just like... The planning is pretty... I guess you get to play putt-putt after, maybe, or something Well, like the that. food hall, there's a, there's a nice bar. 
Mm -hmm. There you is. Sit at the bar. You're still like eating cafeteria style. You know yeah, I mean? but it's a higher end. You're not going to. Uh, took I, I took her out to a nice high end cafeteria, baby. Higher end, because that's how I roll. I don't know. I, feel, I mean, yeah, it's not in the basement of the Galleria. I'll give you that. There's no one giving out little free samples of the Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah. The new Cajun Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> right. the, the, the chicken teriyaki. Or, yeah. You know, uh, where are you going to go? We're going to go to Sparrow's. Mm. Cool. I don't know. I mean, because it also depends on the food hall, I guess. Because there's one at the Grove there in L.A. that's farmer's market kind of thing, and it's... Yeah, is, eccentric. I've actually been to that one. It's, My it's, friends live across from that. It is nice. Yeah, it's very cool over there. That's a cool one. And you can go walk around the Grove, and uh, it's beautiful. All right, first date. What about a place like uh, Applebee's or Chili's or TGI Friday's? We'll call them corporate casual dining chains. I think it's played out. Good for high schoolers. Yeah. Good for high schoolers, yes. Going out on, like, a fixed budget. It's, you get to sit down and be waited on, but, you know, you can go for the two for 20, and no, you're not going to. But I don't think, adult, like, adults. I think a it's a good date. idea because you can impress your date by showing how wise you are with your money by bringing a coupon and getting a really yes, good deal. Yes, that's yeah. nothing like a, turn, you know, like a coupon mm -hmm. to turn a check on. Free appetizer. Hey. Well, and, you know, nothing really says class and, and sparks flying like a statue of the Blues Brothers staring right at you. <laughs> that doesn't look like them at all. That doesn't. That only vaguely resembles yeah. John Belushi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Got a microphone. Come on, endless salad and breadsticks in Olive Garden. True. Come on, Olive Garden's a little better. They try to make it feel yeah. like you're had a nice. They like try cheesecake. to make it feel like a restaurant. But when you're there, you're family. So yeah. It, oh yeah. You know. That's true. Weird. All right. What about a pizza joint? Yeah. That's yes. okay. I that's think great. I think pizza's yeah. great. I think that's perfect. Especially pizza joint, local. Great. Renowned. Well, it depends. I want to take somebody. Like I mean, no offense. You don't want to like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's got to be like a sit down place. One of those cool like ones a Dewey's or something. Right, right, right. right. Dewey's is I don't perfect. know about like popping in an Emo's. No, no disrespect you, on the Emo's name, but that's more of a take home pizza. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like a Dewey's. Yeah. Right. Something like that would be all right. Yeah. What about a, um, let's see here, what about an all you could eat whatever? A buffet? All you could eat is bad. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, that is a You want to find out what idea. she's made of? Yeah, take her to all you can eat place. Oh, man, that Let's is go. A great idea. Yeah, that's a win. Yeah, when you walk through the doors of an all you can eat buffet, you are legally required to overeat. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And that'll Because you have to attempt to beat the house. It'll impress everybody at the table. That's for sure. What about a grocery store hot bar? <laughs> hmm. Like, you're just going to sit there and eat it and not pay? Kind of dangerous. I like it. Yeah. Wow. No, we're not saying, no, not saying to, to steal. Oh. But you're talking about like a Whole Foods. I'm a bit a of a buffet. bad boy. <laughs> Come to this Deer Burgers with me. I'm going to yeah. get you some they soup. They have a good hot bar at the, uh, like, Schnooks. Mm-hmm. First date. That's a great idea. I'm in. Nah. Probably not a great. No, oh, probably not a great. Yeah, first yeah I'm gonna go no. On no. That. Okay. No? Okay. Uh, and this one article, uh, it says one of the worst places is restaurants that serve unlimited bread. The carb load heaven that can turn any meal into a feast fit for champions. But let's face it, first dates might not be the best time to embrace the bread basket with open arms. Especially for us nervous eaters who might subconsciously munch through awkward introductions, things can get ugly fast. Mm. <laughs> so are Mexican restaurants included with this? White bread digests quickly and can drastically affect your blood sugar levels. You might find yourself in a sleepy post-meal haze <laughs> before the entrees even show up. Good point. Never thought of that. Mm -hmm. Never thought of it. Well, listen, guys, good luck out there. <laughs> no hot bars. Good luck. No, no grocery store hot bars for a first uh, date. Nah, don't do it. What if? What about the Olive Bar at, at like Whole, Whole Foods? Foods? Yeah, the Whole Foods Olive Bar. <laughs> yeah, that's classy. That is, is classy. classy Although we were at Whole Foods. Yummy. Well, listen, fellas, if you do strike out uh, after the break, we do have something for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's very apropos of the times we're in. Wow. And one of us 
has been using it recently. Uh, Jacob says, uh, I took a first date to the grocery store hot bar at a Hy-Vee. Never saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> so uh, we'll put a capper on the Sex Time Fun Facts good Sex too. Toy of the Week next. And, uh, Rafe, some of your emails after the break. Okay. It is 8.36. It is Monday. It's the traffic and weather with Learn. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. Coming at you. Worldwide Technology Raceway sponsors your traffic. The biggest race of 2024 is happening on Sunday, June 2nd. Lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets at WWTRaceway.com. We have a stalled vehicle eastbound 40 just past Lindbergh Boulevard. The right lane is closed. Also, EMS on the scene to an accident reported westbound on Manchester at Moeller Road. Your point weather today, we will get up to 69 degrees, a low of 34. And right now, it's just 39 at 37. We're talking about uh, good and bad places to go on a first date as far as restaurants go. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, wing place is not good. Sushi place is good. Right. Grocery store, a uh, hot bar, not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame, man. Yeah. Second date, heck yeah. All right. So if you're on a first date and don't want a second one, just do all the stuff on this list. So somebody came up with the top food turnoffs. <laughs> so somebody asked people to name the top food-related turnoffs. Give me one. Garlic. Um, That's a good one. Yeah. I love garlic, but me people too. are turned off by it. Okay, I'm more talking like behavior of the other person. Oh. oh. Like so food-related like turnoffs, okay. behavior-wise. Um, rude to the server. Rude to the server yeah. was the number one thing. Great. Yeah, that nice could. One. That's, the, that's the number one turnoff. Mm hmm is there something about the check, it's either splitting uh, it or assuming the other person is going to pay? Um, no, that right. didn't make the top ten. The top, no, burping didn't either, which was which okay. was wild. What about slurping soup? That's number six on the list. Wow. Slurping, slurping soup is the <laughs> number so you six. You can't compliment the chef anymore. Yeah, that's well, it's chewing with your mouth open. That's number three. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, chewing with your mouth open is number two. Yeah. Talking with your mouth full is number three. Yeah. Misophonias okay. rise up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, I guess the loud chewers. Uh, loud chewing didn't make the top ten. Picking your teeth was number five. Was, mm. Okay, so licking your finger, picking your teeth. Is licking your fingers um, was number ten. Licking your fingers clean. Oh, how disgusting. Oh, man. If I see somebody go like... Like the, the finger, you're watching the webcams. <laughs> like licking each finger yeah. clean. It's, oh, yeah, if they did it like that. So, yeah, that You've never seen bad. anybody do that? Not like the way you just did it. <laughs> That's going to haunt but my dreams. But somehow at like a barbecue, it's okay to do no, that. No, it's never okay to do. I don't know. I've, I don't get as grossed out at the barbecues that I attend. But the restaurants, yes. There's something about the... Menu is dirty, and you're dirty, uh, and your fingers are in your mouth. The key is, like, you don't do the tips. You suck the whole thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really slowly. You just just like, go down, to the, yep. just go down to, the, right. to the second knuckle. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no second knuckle. That looks cool, man. Go, that's right. You go all the way down, suck that thumb dry. <laughs> uh, spitting something back out onto your plate. That's number four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, what if it's, like, hot? Yeah. You ever done that where That's you went in too early and it's hot and you're like, damn, I have, I have a choice to make because you either got to spit this out or just take the burn and try to like do the reverse suck and move it around in your mouth, but it never really works. You all spit it back onto your plate. What about having some, I had olives that had pits in them the other day. Um, and I had and to spit, spit those, those pits out. out. Suck my thumb and now I have to get yeah, hand sanitizer. That's, I guess you could do it discreetly. Is that what they're saying? Nobody ever looks you discreet. The... You know, like. Uh, Zach says double dipping. That made number 11 on the list. Just missed out the top 10. Yeah. Um, eating something off their plate without asking. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, boy. That's a move. That should Ooh, be number one. Ballsy, that's a ballsy move. Licking your knife was number eight. That could be kind of cool, though. Yeah. After you just stabbed a person. Nah, mm -hmm. dude. That's when it's cool. <laughs> that's what I like to do. You just it. buttered your baked potato. Yeah, his dad licks lick it. his plate. Ew. And I had to. Oh, yeah. And like, it was lifts an inherited it up. trait that I've broken her of. Licks, like, lifts the plate up. Lifts Is up the plate. Is that a Russian thing? 
I think maybe. Uh, I've, I've never seen it. It's a quicker Washington. way to wash your dishes, that's for sure. He would My literally eat would food and then, like, pick up his plate and, like, lick the yeah. plate. Yeah. Like, and I'm like. Every morsel. I remember the first time at the house, I go, what the hell was that? <laughs> and she goes, what? And I go, your, your dad just picked up the plate and licked it like he was a cat. <laughs> Enjoy the meal, Ivan. <laughs> Igor, are you good? Igor. <laughs> Igor, really enjoy that, huh? <laughs> and it turns out it was just a da her dad thing. It is ah. not a Russian thing. Okay. But, like, that's, licking the knife's one thing. But, if, like, imagine if you're on a date and someone just, like, picked the plate up and, <laughs> like, licked it clean. Uh, number nine turn off is criticizing the food if you stayed in and they cooked it. Of course. That yeah, would be yeah. bad. Talking about how attractive the server is. Uh, Honestly. No, I don't know. That, made, that did not make the list. That would probably be a turn off for me. If it was a restaurant, too. If it was, like, a first date. And, like, granted, like, sometimes food is bad. It comes out wrong. But if, like, if there's a litany of complaints coming from across the table, Enough. make a footnote. Yeah, make right. a footnote yeah. that this is the this is probably who they are. This yeah. is all you're going to hear. Also, uh, just, make, just missing the top ten. As I mentioned, double dipping, playing with your food, and then putting ketchup on everything. Mm. Putting ketchup Unless on a, everything. What if it's a steak, though? This is, put it on. What is this, written by Big Mustard? Why ketchup? Why is that singled out? I mean, how often are we putting things ketchup on anything? People put ketchup on everything. About time somebody stick up for French's. Good job. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I don't know who these people are. You get a good piece of steak and you're putting ketchup on it, get the hell out of here. I understand yeah. that. <laughs> but what? <laughs> Fries. Okay. Fries, fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's different ball all, game. A hot dog. Okay, great. Maybe this falls into the picking your teeth category, but I, my pet peeve, and I hate it so much, is and maybe it's from being a server, and I hate when people either use, like, a dent pick at the table and, like, leave it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Or when they have, like, gum and they spit it in, in, like, a sweet and low wrapper and then just, like, fold it in half and then stick it on the table. Yep. Drives me crazy. Well, at least they wrapped it up. Yeah. No. So What? So if what do you want can them I take, to do with it? Can I take a dump in the napkin and just fold it in half and put it on? It's a been dump in, would it's, smell. It's been in your body. You're making it. It's just Those gross. Fork, you prefer like, people go yeah, to the bathroom to yeah, get the fork rid of it? Was in my, it yeah, the fork was in my... Yeah, just can't throw it away. The fork was in one of my orifices, yeah. too. That's how I found I had a cavity. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys say now, right? <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no. Can I say that I am the sweet and low gum girl? I believe it. I do it. Yeah, I've done it before. I mean, yeah, I, I'm definitely. And you could go to hell. <laughs> yeah, but here's I don't the problem. It up. Well, you got to stick it. There's a table. You put it underneath the table. People forget, and then you leave it, and then the server is like their bus boy is cleaning the table, and then they like grab it, and it's wet. I always put it on oh, the plate. But well, I, mean, kind of, I make it apparent. Why is it wet? It's not wet. I fold it up, and it's yeah. It just will would be swept with all the other stuff mm -hmm. away. Yeah. You're still. That's just gross. What about in a napkin? What am I doing with it? What am I doing? Throw it in the trash. W what trash? Where? Go to the bathroom and throw it in the trash or go find a trash can to restaurant. You know what? I'm putting cans. it in your hair when, yeah. when I see you. It's disgusting. Good idea. Spit it out when you hug. Anyway. No. But what about a cell phone on the table? And they answer. That is not, well, that is not, a, that did not come up in the turn off wow. list. Maybe if you bring this with you, that's a turn off. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a turn on. Uh, all right, Rafe, this uh, what do we got? turn on. And, and, you know, with the uh, Academy Awards being last night and the fact that Learn got eight cannabis seltzers deep and watched a sequel to a movie to which he had not seen the first one yeah. Yeah. and still gave it an A-. minus. <laughs> this week's sex toy of the week is the Dune 2 popcorn bucket. Ah! <laughs> Guys, I looked for one. None existed. Yeah, no. and you know they what's funny? My, my son went to go ask for one. Uh, he went to go see Dune 2 mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday. Uh -huh. And uh, apparently it's an AMC thing only. Yep. $25 uh -huh. for one of these things. That's right. Well, twenty four ninety nine at AMC Theaters and up to $800 on eBay. Whoa, Wowie. man. They're go selling like hotcakes. Yeah. Now, either people love popcorn or <laughs> some people want to find out what it's like. To get freaky naughty with the Dune 2 popcorn bucket. That Why bang hilarious. a flashlight when you can bone the mouth of a sandworm? Great huh? question. <laughs> Great question. The Dune versus giant desert creatures, Shai Halud. Yeah. 
have slithered their way into the hearts of millions in an unexpected way through a novelty movie theater popcorn bucket. Dune Part 2 recently hit the big screen with a blowout opening weekend debuting to a massive $81.5 million at the box office. In anticipation of the sequel, AMC Theaters released a limited edition Sandworm Popcorn Bucket available to purchase in theaters, and ever since it's been announced, it's um, unique design in order to grab popcorn... You have to uh, reach into a gaping hole and pull your fist out through rubbery worm teeth. Mm. Yeah. It's been about as buzzy as the film itself. The bucket has spawned everything from a raunchy SNL music video to plenty of Twitter memes about its resemblance to a very popular sex toy. Yes. Uh, but your personal sex toy review of The Rich Show has gone a little further down the rabbit hole. And I got on Reddit last night because uh -oh. I'm like, somebody's banged this bucket. Oh, without a doubt. Jokes aside, it's happened. Reddit did not let me down. I found three reviews of people who have actually had sex with the Dune popcorn bucket. Okay. So here we go. Review number one. My boyfriend and I used the Dune popcorn bucket for nefarious purposes. He <laughs> he. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just one of those things you kind of don't want to keep to yourself. Ultimately, it was predictably underwhelming. More of a light brushing sensation than anything. Two out of five stars from him. He didn't even finish. Will not be using it for popcorn. <laughs> Thank you. Good to know. Glad they put that on the end. All right, that was the first review. Second review, not tight enough for actual penetration, but the tentacles deaf have proved to have some good sensation. I guess when it comes to Dune 2, this is the real spice. <laughs> Dune reference, yes. Yes, nice Dune reference. And finally, my favorite from a reviewer named Girth Vader. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> trustworthy. <laughs> Girth Vader says, as a guy with a short, fat wiener, this thing actually did the trick. It wasn't the best, but my girlfriend and I came up with a nice hack. We cut the bottom out of the bucket, so after we lubed up the sandworm's mouth with some KY jelly and the butter left over from the movie, yes, we used it properly first. Oh I dunked my in God. to find a nice double sensation surprise. I have a short thicky, kind of like a Coors Banquet bottle. <laughs> So the silicone teeth tickled my chubby like a sandworm upon entry, and lo and behold, my girlfriend's lubed-up hand was waiting right. on the inside, coming in from the other end of the bucket. What a wild ride. Wow. It didn't take long till my little toes curled up, and I was yelling, Tighten your grip, Raban, and lead me to paradise. Arrakis! <laughs> Okay. Cool. And that concludes That's this week's cool. Dune 2 Popcorn Bucket <laughs> Sex Toy Review. All right. We're going to leave that there. <laughs> we're going to regroup. We'll take wow. Arrakis. 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 We'll take Try a break. That. We'll come back with some emails. Jeez. I hope emails. that girl yells that to that guy tonight. <laughs> Arrakis. Emails, and then uh, Learn's going to regale us with a uh, proper sports report. Oh, yes. Things need to be said. Things definitely need to be said. Yeah. People are looking forward to it. Oh, and hey. A lot of chatter about the sports report. Do you remember um, it was the AFC wild card game between the Dolphins and the Chiefs? Was yeah. like one of the coldest games in yeah, history? I saw oh, this article. This Did you hear about wild. Chiefs fans suffer amputations after frostbite. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it next. It is straight up nine o'clock. Riz show presented by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather. Learn coming at you. It's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening Sunday, June second. Time and to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets right now. WWTRaceway.com. EMS responding to an accident reported at Weber and Laclede Station. Your point weather today will get up to a high of 69. Gorgeous like you see right now. A low of 34 uh, later tonight. And right now it is 43 degrees at 9 a.m. Ooh, we're supposed to do a concert announcement. Oh yes. Here. Before Oops. we hit the break, because it's straight up 9 o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen and people of all ages, 105.7 The Point presents Pointergeist featuring Breaking Benjamin. Breaking Benjamin, guys. Arrakis. And Stained <laughs> and Daughtry and Lakeview. Hollywood okay. Casino Amphitheater, Tuesday, October 1st, on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. So Breaking Benjamin, Stained, Daughtry. And Lakeview. And Arrakis. And Arrakis. Tuesday, October 1st. We got details, 1057thepoint.com. On sale? Uh, this Friday. This Friday. There you go. That's the big one. All right. Uh, stay there.
Well, we'll get to uh, emails here in a second, but uh, January's AFC Wild Guard game between the Dolphins and Kansas City Chiefs was was the scene of extreme cold, mm-hmm. and some fans have paid the ultimate uh. price. So on Friday, the Research Medical Center in Kansas City said several fans who attended the January 13th game had to undergo amputations of fingers and toes wow. because of frostbite damage. But go Chiefs, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, it, man, go man, Chiefs. It. They helped them win. Would you lose a toe for the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl? Are you looking at me? No. <laughs> Not you? Which toe? Mm-hmm. Big toe. Mm, that's a balancing toe. <sighs> Little toe. Yeah. You would you you would lose what? little toe. Man. That's your blade toe though. How dare you get rid of your blade toe for hey, the Chiefs? I, my blade toe would understand how much a Lombardi trophy means. Just, now, the hospital said they plan <laughs> they expect I'd keep the toe. Like in Lebowski when they have the little Good toe. Luck. I'd put the, the toe right next to the Lombardi. <laughs> yeah. A little bitty little bitty jar, a baby food jar. The hospital said they expect to perform more surgeries in the coming weeks as the as the frostbite injuries evolve. Oh, geez. Is Everybody's it all got, toes? Yeah, they're just Fingers and toes. toes. Oh. And losing a finger would be tough. Fingers and toes. Toes, you can <sighs> hide it. So would be tough. Uh, the research center treated other frostbitten fans after the game, but their conditions did not require amputation. Mm. Uh, temperatures uh, on 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 that night, so it's January thirteenth, reached minus four Fahrenheit with a wind chill that remember it was twenty seven degrees minus minus twenty seven degrees. So cold. Golly, and I guess these are folks who probably just didn't have winter gear. Right, and they went out in normal. Hmm. Yeah, they, they were a coat, and that's basically it was pretty them. cold, man. I could imagine like you could probably gear up, and if you're standing out there on concrete for. But yeah, up there in the seats, too, with the wind blowing. You don't got the right socks on. Socks and gloves. Yeesh. And they don't really have any good warm spots in that. I wonder if anybody's, like, losing the nose or something crazy like that. I just saw fingers and toes. Well, My mole sucks. froze Chiefs off. Kingdom. That sucks. So, well, there were people with shirts off, if you remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always booze was doing a lot of the... Guy lost a nipple. Frozen nipple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shocked, too, no injuries happened to players because they're out there short sleeves. <laughs> Some of their calves are showing, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but they, they run off to the sideline. Somebody throws a coat around, you sure. know, over their shoulders. Yeah. And they got the heated benches. Yeah. And those big jackets. Yeah, the mm-hmm. big jackets. So cool. Dale, your nipples are alarmingly black. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'll be fine. Uh, yeah, go that. Chiefs. <laughs> all right, Rafe, uh, some emails, please. Uh, and your email segment is sponsored by... Kloss Furniture, lowest prices guaranteed. We have something for everybody. Mm. It's nice. Well, let's start with one that came in today about high school. An often talked about topic here on the Riz Show from uh, from Louis Gumbo. Riz, there are more benign reasons people here ask where you went to high school. First, St. Louis is a small, large town. I knew people that went to 12 different high schools. You want to see if someone knows someone you know. It's relationally oriented. Second, I generally want to see if someone went to the same high school as me or a rival high school. These are the conversational questions. Maybe Lafayette kids are asking it to gauge socioeconomic status, but I bet the majority of us from the Zumwalt School District, shout out to Zumwalt, I guess, in this email, growing up in what was majority farmlands in the 90s, don't care about how much money someone's family has. Oh, oh I'm, listen, I, the glass I was is just always talking. half empty, Mr. Rizzuto. Sincerely, E Memoriam Second. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I always heard that uh, you ask somebody's. You know, ask where somebody went to high school to, to gear their socioeconomic status growing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree. I Yeah, I disagree yeah. with this email. Just from as an outsider, I feel like the times that I've heard it asked at parties, that was like, uh, it was more of an aim of like, am I better than you? Mm-hmm. Did you go to a school that I would consider trash school, poor people right. school? Mm-hmm. Did you go to private or rich school? school? Or did you go to a rich right. school? Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like it was a socioeconomic uh, background test. And yes, I'm sure, Louie, that you also did ask if you went to a certain high school because maybe you got a friend that went there, or maybe I went there. Yeah. I get that part. I get that, too. But it's the question. Yeah. Mm. Like, when I first moved here, I was warned, like, people will ask you where you went to high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's the question. And you're the perfect person to answer because you were from out of town. Clarkstown South we High School. We Go don't Vikings. know what the hell that is. That's cool. We want to know more about that. Yeah, I had that. The first experience I had with that was at a party, and somebody was like, where'd you go to school? And I was like, oh, I got my graduate degree from SIU Edwardsville. And they literally scoffed at me. College right. boy. No. <laughs> high school. And I go, oh, yeah, I'm the lame one. Sorry. <laughs> I'm 40. <laughs> I went to high school at El Verado High School, and they're like, oh, you didn't go to St. Louis. And it was like, I felt like it was an instant yeah. judgment. I'm like, I already laid out there that I got a graduate degree from a third-tier public college. I, The writing was on the wall. <laughs> You okay. can probably guess. Right? Hey, no shame in the SIUE game. I ain't hating. No. I party at Cougar Village all the time. Cougarville, third tier? Get out of here. Oh, easily third tier. But that's fine. Third tier education, first tier pricing. Hey, that's a good deal. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Scott, what high school did you go to? Uh, South Shelby High School. Uh -huh. So is everyone, when I, I say that, category. very wealthy. <laughs> South Shelby. Uh, a lot of money in that place. You must have sex with family members. <laughs> No one here That's actually went to St. Louis High School, right? <laughs> no. I'm well, sorry? No, nah, so no one here actually went to a St. Louis High School. No. And have you noticed no, that people are kind of disappointed whenever you're not a St. Louis? Yeah, that's graduate. what I mean. It's like, never hmm. like a... Uh, Bummer. I don't know. It feels a little more pointed to me. But yeah. Thanks, Louie, for your feedback. So if somebody says, I went to John Burroughs, what would you say? Do you know John Hamm? No, I'd go, oh. whoa! Whoa! John Hamm went there. Yeah, I instantly asked, yeah. can I borrow money? Right. MICDS. Whoa, man. Woo. Ha. Ha. Ah, next. <laughs> next. Happy Monday. Ugh. Uh, Monday just seems to roll back around too quickly. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Wow. I just wanted to say what a great time it was Saturday at the Fenton Hot Shots. Great group of people. All those quote unquote team members. I don't know why it was in quote. Uh, was and, it Team Riz? Yeah. I don't know why they put it in quotes. So nice to see Riz. Thanks for the swag and the appetizers, too. Hope to see the rest of you out somewhere soon. You bought ap appetizers for people? Oh, yeah. It was, hey, uh -huh. invite, free food. That's Dang, nice. They had, nice uh, oh, I forgot to bring the menu. They had different shots. They did? Yeah. For different cast members of the yes, show? Yes, I forgot. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh man! Mine what were, do you remember? No. Oh, damn it. Oh, was mine God. just barbecue sauce in a shot glass? Yes. Mm. No, it was the liquid that uh, after pork steak is cooked, they just put it in a shot glass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the runoff. Pork steak. They put, them in, a, pork steak they put them in a foreman grill, and they just emptied the trays into shot glasses. <laughs> oh, uh, Jay Boyd, if you're listening, send me, if you can, send me the, uh, the menu. I'm so curious. Oh, I now. forgot. Dang. But it was great to see everybody. What was your drink? I f you can't Dang even, it. Okay. All right. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. I feel like you were like you're by yourself. By myself. There were so many people Riz there. meet up on top of a meet and greet. Like, I feel like you're spending a lot of plates. Yeah. For the team. And I tell you what, so if you're a team Riz member, you got the email like, hey, keep this on, keep this on the on the on the down low. Yeah. On the down low. And man, people turned out three to five o'clock on a Saturday at the Hot Shots at Fenton. That's I got great. to the I got to the uh, to the bar and the parking lot's full. That's my Whoa. favorite Hot Shots is that one. Had some good time. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool, a lot of memories of that Hot Shots. Mm -hmm. But it was great seeing everybody. That's great. Uh, next. Riz watched The Beekeeper this weekend with my wife. And you loved it. Oh, man. <laughs> that was so bad, LOL. <laughs> no. What? But Lordy, did it make me giggle. What is everyone's opinion on Steven Seagal movies? Right, I feel like Jason all. Statham has become... The new Steven Seagal. Okay. Well, let me tell Zion you, Jacob. going into the movie The Beekeeper, you know what you're getting. It's a shoot 'em up. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Not much of a, not much of a, a mm -hmm. story. God, Steven it's Seagal. Right high now. body count. And I heard it's already nominated for next year, for the Oscars. So. He looks like a melting candle. <laughs> Steven Seagal. Ponytail. Yeah. He looks just god awful. That widow's peak is otherworldly. It is, and he's he's the guy that's like he ain't spending money on the good die job. No. He's just putting shoe just polish, polish in his hair, dude. Yeah. Okay, there are, there are a couple really great Steven Seagal movies. Okay. Okay, number one is the one where he's on the train. 
Under siege. Under siege to dark territory. Every <laughs> every Steven Seagal movie is the most broest name of a title movie ever. It's under siege. Yeah. Uh, marked for death. Okay, so under siege. The first one was with Tommy Lee Jones. They're all above the, the law. The, Tommy Lee Jones is in the first one where he's on the battleship, and and Steven Seagal is the cook. And, but, but he kicks ass. He does, and he looks great. So he saves the day but there. he's the cook because he was a rogue Navy SEAL mm. who didn't play by the rules right, and got okay, busted but, down. But in Under Siege 2, <laughs> Dark Territory, so he's in the galley, you have the kitchen of the train, yeah. and he beats the hell out of like 10 guys with a frying pan, and he goes, nobody beats me in the kitchen. And I go, This is that's the right line. On. Yeah. <laughs> what about the movie Exit Wounds? From uh, is that with DMX? It is. Give me light or give me death. Let my soul rest. Take my breath. Okay. Actually, that's a good soundtrack. Under Siege. I think Ja Rule was in that too. Under Siege. The last, the the Under Siege 2 from the plane. On the uh, the, the train. Eric Bogosian is the bad guy. Yeah. He's holding on to the, he's holding on to the helicopter at the end. And Steven Seagal closes the, <laughs> he closes the door, and his fingers get all chopped off. <laughs> and, he's, and you see all his fingers; and they're still there. Ew, they're in there. That's, oh god! See if you can pull that up, Scott. No, I don't want to be <laughs> cut off. Dude, there's little... also I if think you can't it's... find that. There is a great YouTube video of Steven Seagal runs. Steven Seagal runs like a, a like a six year old girl who just saw a spider. And there's like. <laughs> And when he runs, he has his arms in like a T Rex, and he just his hands are all loose. And there's like a there you can there's a YouTube video that's just him running on repeat. And it's like a nine hour video. It's just Steven Seagal running, and it is hilarious. All right, there's also a movie called Out for Justice. Out for Justice. Okay, where he beats the hell out of somebody with a cue ball on a sock. He always got a prop. <laughs> uh, and then he shoots somebody's leg off with a shotgun. March for like- death. There was a there was a. A, a Seagal time that was all three word titles for a while. It was like March for Death, Out for Justice. Yeah. Every, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Every Steven Seagal movie, he has a gun in his hand for the cover. Yeah, dude. Every one of them. Every That's how you know this the best. To the sun. That's how. Back in the day. The pistol whip, attack force, flight or fury, or flight of fury, the yeah. foreigner. Well, then Steven, and I hope Jason Statham doesn't go this far, but Seagal like, started to believe in his own hype. Yeah. And uh, he, like, became... I was, like, down in New Orleans. There's a reality show where he became, like, a parish sheriff. (laughs) Yes. And he was a literal cop, and he was, like, going around. But for some reason, like, he took on a fake, like... He's not from New Orleans, dude, but he would, like, be like... Oh, tell me what's going on in here now. <laughs> he, was like, he was like oh doing God. a character. It was like he was doing a bad Cajun accent. He'd be like, brother, brother, tell me what's going on in here. You can't be going up in here like that. You know that ain't right. You know that the way you live in your life ain't right, my brother. And I'm just like, <laughs> what is this, man? This is weird as hell. But it, it was like he was a sheriff. He got, and I think he got, ended up getting his like, I think he got fired. <laughs> this <something happened. laughs> I think he did something. Like he got. He went Steven Seagal and like kicked a door in or something and like isn't he like an Aikido like like legit Aikido? He is, but like everyone's like makes fun of him. I was like, dude, he'd get destroyed so fast. Van Dam tried to fight him in the nineties, like at a party. They were both wearing tuxedos and they got in a fight about because Van Dam was actually like a middleweight. Van Dam and Lundgren were both middleweight kickboxing champions in Europe. Like they legit had like fighting careers. Seagal had nothing. Seagal had his own story. And he always was, and I kind of respected him because he was never really in good shape. <laughs> you know, he was in like kind of okay shape for the first three movies. And then he just like started eating just biscuits of gravy yeah. for every meal. <laughs> but he, and he just like, so he'd have slow fights where he could only use his hands. Yeah. In movies, so yeah. But, you see, there's YouTube videos of that. Yeah. Yeah. Where he's out like, like on a mat and he's in a. Yeah, he he can't wear anything form fitting anymore. He's got to wear like big black robes. He, he wears like yeah, the kung fu. He became, he leaned into the kung fu robes to hide it. Uh, Michelle sent over the drink menu from. Uh, oh great! Oh yeah, Saturday, Let's hear it. from Saturday. Thank you, Michelle. So drinks. There was the weirdo, uh, kettle one, uh, freshly muddled lemon, uh, strawberry smash. Mm. Then the arbiter, which was named after me. That's uh, Smirnoff peach vodka. Nice. Ooh. Peach schnapps, orange juice, pineapple juice, and grenadine. Then the shots. There's a Learn's Sweet Tart, 
Cute. Smirnoff raspberry vodka, pineapple and sour. Rafe's apple jacks, that's apple and bourbon. Mm. Uh, Moon's nerd rope. Smirnoff lemon berry sour vodka, watermelon, and white monster. And then King Scott's piece of ass. Nice. Ah, yeah. Which is Southern Comfort, Amaretto, peach, and sour. It's my go to. I love you guys over there. Yeah, thank you. Very nice. I gotta Very say, nice. Steven Seagal. He was really hot in the 80s and 90s with the ponytail. That kind of opened it up for me as far as yeah, he men had with a, ponytails. He had a quick moment. Yeah. The Widow's Peak was great. Now it's awful. It's got awful now. Mm -hmm. It's like the beekeeper. But he had his moment. You like watch a Seagal movie, you know what you're getting. Guns. High quality you're getting good stuff. guns. You're getting a ponytail with. You're getting a high body count. It's good guys versus bad guys. Yeah. That's it. I'm not looking for Oppenheimer. This movie's not winning any awards. No, it's not. Yeah, but Statham had promise. You know, he was in he was in Snatch. He was good in that. He wasn't really playing that character in that movie. Yeah, but then he started I mean, doing all the expendable stuff, and yeah, he kind of went kinda, down the cheese road. Yeah, he kind of... Seagal started... Seagal had nowhere else to go. That was the path. <laughs> Seagal was never going to be in, like, the Romeo and Juliet remake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that wasn't going to happen. He wasn't going to be in, like, a clever Guy Ritchie movie. He was always going to be... The guy slap fighting somebody. Yeah, like, nobody beats me in the kitchen. And giving the one liner. But I don't know what his voice sounds like. Seagal? Yeah. He, he kind of talks like really quiet. Yeah. It depends <laughs> on if he's playing in Italian. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, it yes. depends on what his, what his last name or first name in the movie is. It's Scarpacci. Scarpaccio. Right on. All right. We got to take a break. Thank you for your emails, by the way. Uh, Rishow1057thepoint.com or send us your instant feedback. And you do that through the uh, 105.7 The Point mobile app. On the other side of the break, learn and sports. It's the Riz Show presented with the fast lane. Traffic and weather. Learn coming at you. It's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening on June 2nd. So lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets right now. WWTRaceway.com. Two vehicle crash westbound uh, 40 just at Hanley there. The two right lanes are closed. Your weather today will get up to 69 degrees, a low of 34. Sunshine <laughs> all day long. Um, right now it is 43 out there. It's 927. Watch. Someone said, don't forget Gary Busey in Under Siege dressing like a woman. Oh, yeah. I about that. Ooh, I'm, nice. pri I'm a woman. <laughs> Look at me. I have boobies. I'm private. <laughs> Stay there. Danny <laughs> Fandango is next. Uh, today's wrap-up is sponsored by Jack of the Box. A little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence, only at Jack. What is the podcast title? It is Full Squat Like a Catcher. Okay, cool. we don't have to bring that up again. Okay. Thank you. I thought that was a cool moment. <laughs> it's a new term. <laughs> the Yachty. <laughs> yeah. All right, what else do you got? Well, you can follow me at King Scott Rules on all social socials, and the 2SG still are not up on Spotify because they think we're spoken word. Weird. That's why they, got, they flagged us. I have no clue. So anyways, <laughs> but follow me. I'll let you know when that happens, and it'll be good. Then yeah, we got the full 2SG rollout, not on Spotify. <laughs> awesome. What a disaster. But I love you, buddy. Fist bump. Yeah, thank yeah. you. All right. Learn? Yes. Uh, follow me on the socials at Learn Versus Radio if you want to see my husband and I dressed up as Pam and Tommy Lee. Um, it was a really good time this weekend crashing Glendale's North trivia and getting called a home mom or whatever. Um, yes, home mom. In your mind. So in my mind. And my band's on there, Lane Narrows, and we just have a really good time. So follow. All right. Follow for headstands. Uh, Rafe. <laughs> Uh, ja, yeah, I am Rafe Williams. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll be in Cleveland this weekend doing shows all over Cleveland. If you have any questions, I'm going to try to get my website updated. It was getting supposed to be done last week, and it wasn't. So, But if you have any questions, you're in Cleveland, you want a link to the show, just DM me, and I'll, I'll hook you up. All right. All right, we'll leave you with a selection from our teamers. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shot, St. Louis home for blues hockey from St. Clair, Missouri. Joe Nestor is our yeah. team. Yeah. And Joe wants to hear this song. Here it is. It's a good one, too. Nice. And we will see you tomorrow. Done it next. Bye. Toodaloo. Hey, what up? It's Jay Farrell. You listening to the Rizzuto Show.